اعراض كو جبيان الساعه 2 بدايه ميعاد الكونفرنس بتاعنا اور فيرست وصابه فيرست ايجيبشن بيتس اونلاين ويبينار حدث عالمي اول مره يحصل في مصر نتمنى ان احنا نخدم بيه زملائنا الاطباء الباتوريين في مصر وفي الوطن العربي كله صحابه طيبين معايا الدكتور محمد اشرف معانا زميلنا الدكتور محمد نبيل رحب استاذنا الدكتور هيثم فرغلي ورحب بكل زملائنا الاطباء البيطريين في مصر والوطن العربي ان شاء الله يبقى ايفنت جميل وعلى قدر المستوى ان شاء الله حضراتكم جميعا تستمتعوا وتستفادوا بالمحاضرات وبالتوبكس اللي احنا هنقدمها لكم اليوم هيمشي ازاي سريعا احنا معانا محاضره مع استاذنا الدكتور هيثم فرغلي عن اوفر فيو بوست بيسيز سمول انيمالز هتبقى من 2 ل 2 ونص ان شاء الله بعديها على طول هيبقى في فيديوز للشركات اللي معانا ان شاء الله ثم هنبدا مع مستر او دكتور شاني ريان دكتور شاني هيعمل انتروداكشن هو بريزدنت اوف زافا وبعد كده يدخل دكتور مايكل لابين هيتكلم عن كوفيد 19 انفكشن وعلاقته بالسمول انيمال او كومبانيون انيمال وريسك للبيت اونر والفيتنري ستاف دي هتبقى مدتها 40 دقيقه وبعديها يدخل دكتوره نشا... نتاشا لي هتتكلم عن انيمال ويلفير ادفايس للفيتس اند بيت اونرز دي هتبقى مدتها 20 دقيقه وبعد كده هنفتح 30 مينيت فور اوبن ديسكشن اسئله واجوبه مع السبيكرز بتوعنا من الوسافه ومع الاستاذ الدكتور هيثم فرجان فخليكم معانا والاسئله هنفتحها في اخر نص ساعه زي ما اتفقنا اللي عايز يسال هنفتح له المايك هيعمل لنا ريز هاند ساعتها هنفتح له المايك اي حد حابب يريكورد المحاضره يعمل لنا ريز هاند هنفتح له الريكورد على طول ويلكم طبعا ونتمنى ان احنا نفيدكم ان شاء الله يبقى ايفنت عالمي وتستفاد بيه كل زمايلنا وهسيب المايك لاستاذنا الدكتور هيثم فرغلي ونبدا ان شاء الله بمحاضره مع الاستاذ الدكتور هيثم اتفضل دكتور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طبعا ده شرف ليا كبير جدا ان انا ابقى مشارك في حدث دولي زي اللي احنا مشاركين فيه ده وان شاء الله نتمنى ان هو ربنا يتمه على خير وان هو يكون نافع لكل اللي موجودين ولكل زملائنا في مجال الطب البيطري انا هتكلم النهارده على اوفر فيو في الاوف اوستيوباسيف ان السمول انيمالز يعني اصابات العظام في الحيوانات الصغيره طبعا احنا الناس الكونسبت الموجود ان امراض العظم كلها جراحيه لا هو طبعا في جزء منها بطنه امراض بطنه للعظام وفي امراض عظام جراحيه بتحتاج تدخل جراحي بصفه عامه ما بنحب نتكلم على اي افكشنز في اي سيستم آه النورمال ان يكون الاستراكشر والفانكشن بتوع السيستم اللي احنا بنتكلم فيه يكون نورمال ما فيهوش اي ديستربنس اي ديستربنس بيحصل في الاستراكشر او في الفانكشن ده بيعتبر ديزيز فعشان كده اول خطوه لازم نعرفها في اي سيستم احنا بنتكلم فيه النورمال استراكشر والنورمال فانكشن عشان اي ديفيجن في الاستراكشر او في الفانكشن او في الاثنين يعتبر ده ديزيز كونديشن وطبعا بالمنطق بالتبعيه يعني لو حبيت اشخص يبقى انا هشخص الاستراكشر اشوفه نورمال ولا اب نورمال واشخص الفانكشن اشوفه نورمال ولا اب نورمال ولو لقيت فيهم اي ديستربنس يبقى انا شخصت المرض والناحيه الثانيه ان انا لو حبيت اعالج لازم ارجع الاب نورمال استراكشر او الاب نورمال فانكشن للنورمال كاركتر بتاعه. السكيلتال سيستم احنا ده جزء العظام والمفاصل طبعا الماسكول سكيلتال سيستم بنضيف عليه الجزء المسلز والسوفت تيشو الريليتد للسكيلتال سيستم او لللوكوموتور سيستم. احنا اول جزء في الـ في الاستراكشر بتاع دكتور هيثم دكتور هيثم استاذنك الصوت بس بيقطع طيب ماشي هو كده مظبوط يعني تمام اتفضل طيب آه. 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 نكمل تاني الفانكشنز بتاعت السكيلتال سيستم آه. برضه هو بيعمل برودكشن للبلاد سيلز سواء الريد بلاد سيلز او البليتليتس او السايتس وانه بيقدر يدي سبيس للمصل عشان يعمل اتاتشمنت وبيحصل فيه ستور للمينرالز وسولت زي الكالسيوم والفوسفورس. في الستراكشر بتاع الماسكولسكيلتال سيستم 
قوي سكيل كان ممكن ناخده على جزء ايه؟ على جزء الهيستولوجي بتاعه وعلى جزء الاناتومي بتاعه. جزء الهيستولوجي احنا الستراكشرز النورمال الموجودة اللي موجودة في العرض مرة بيبقى فيه الميوستيم وبعد كده بيبقى فيه الهيستولوجي سيستم موجود من جوه فيه الميوستيم وكل ده السيلس بور الكورتال بور وفي النص بيبقى فيه الموجود كبير. الكورتال بور ده الكورتال بور الاوشن سيستم فيه بيبقى ارينجد في سيستم بشكل منظم وبيبقى بيحتوي من جوه على الاوستيوكلاست الاوستيوبلاست والاوستيوسايت والمينرز الكاسم والفوسفورس البيري اوستيوم بيحتوي على الاوستيوبلاست والاوستيوكلاست الاوستيوكلاست دي اللي هي بتاكل العظم اللي هي بتبتدي اي اوفر جروس بيحصل في العظم هي بتعمل له ريموديلنج في النوع الثاني من العظم اللي هو السبونج بون او الكانسيلاس الكانسيلاس بون وده الموجود في الاكستريميتي وده الهيفيرجن سيستم بيبقى ارينجد في الريجولار باترن موجود فيه والمارو كافيتي من جوه زي ما احنا آه عارفين. آه بالنسبه للجزء الاناتومي احنا بنقسم العظمه لابيفيسز اللي هي الاكستريميتي الجزء اللي داخل من الاكستريميتي في الارتيكيوليشن والميتافيسز ده الجزء آه من السبونجي بون او الكانسيلا سبون اللي مش داخل جوه الارتيكيوليشن وجزء الدايفيسز اللي هو الجزء اللي فيه البون مارو والبلاد سبلاي آه اللي هو الشافت بتاعت العظمه تمام وطبعا الجزء الارتيكولار كارتليج ده جزء من العظمه اللي داخل جوه آه الارتيكيوليشن آه نيجي للكلام بصفه عامه على فحص جهاز الهيكلي او اللي هو الاكزامينيشن اوف ذا اورثوبيديك بيشنت لو انا جاي لي بيشنت عاوز افحصه وعاوز اعرف اذا كان عنده مشكله في الاورثوبيديك سيستم بتاعه او في الـ في الـ المسكول سكيليتال سيستم بتاعه آه في روتين كده ان احنا اي حاجه بنبدا سيستميك ابروتش بتاعنا ان انا باخد اونر كومبلين شكوى صاحب الحاله وبعمل آه باخد الكيس هيستوري والكلام ده مهم وفي سبيشال آه شيت بيبقى موجود للاورثوبيديك افكشنز وبعديها ابتدي اشوف الحيوان بتاعي اعمل له انسبكشن الانسبكشن بتاعي بعمله في الستاندنج بوزيشن بشوفه وهو واقف وبشوفه وهو بيتحرك تمام أه وحاش هوريكم فيديو على طرق من ضمن طرق الايفالويشن بتاعت الجيت ان انا اعمل جيت اناليسيز ده ممكن اعمله فيجوال كده بعينيا وممكن اعمله بتولز يعني بجيت اناليسيز سيستم أه أه الخطوه اللي بعديها ان انا ببتدي اعمل الفيزيكال اكزامينيشن بتاعي احنا بنمشي ممكن امشي في طريقتين في الستاندنج بوزيشن ان انا افحص الحيوان بتاعي وهو واقف وممكن افحصه في الريكومبنت بوزيشن هوريكم فيديو على طريقه الفحص بتاعت اللوكوموتور سيستم او الماسكول سكيليتال سيستم في الستاندنج بوزيشن تمام وممكن اعمل الكلام ده كله آه على الريكومبنت بوزيشن احنا بنفحصهم عظمه عظمه ومفصل مفصل حتى لو الافكشن اللي هو جاي بالكومبلين بتاعه موجود في, في, في جوينت او في عظمه لازم افحص بقيه السيستم كامل على اساس ان انا اطمن انه ما فيش افكشن في حته ثانيه تمام طبعا في اللي هم بعد ما اخلص الفيزيكال اكزامينيشن بتاعي ببتدي اعمل ممكن اعمل نيورولوجيكال اكزامينيشن طبعا الاكس راي او الراديوجراف هو ده اساس الدايجنوزس بتاعت المسكول سكيليتال سيستم او السكيليتال سيستم ممكن استخدم الالترا ساوند في السوفت تيشو والسي تي والام ار اي والارثروسكوب طبعا والبايوبسي ده فيديو هيورينا طريقه الفحص بتاعت الانيمال that you can do to make the process more successful and to improve your results. Number one is to have your owner present if possible. That allows the dog to be more comfortable. It allows the owner to, to participate into a limited degree and will often ensure that you're able to get through the process with less patient distress. Number two, It's important to have a technician present who is comfortable, well trained and able to restrain the patient so that the patient is safe, the owner is safe and the veterinary team is safe. Number three, use a surface that's comfortable to work on, that allows the staff to work closely to the patient and the patient is comfortable standing on. A good rubber mat is essential to this process. When starting the exam, it's important to say hello to the patient and reassure them that everything is going to be okay. The next step is to move forward 
and start to place your hands on the patient. The technician will support and restrain your hands in front to reassure. I start by placing my hands and just feeling the patient, getting them used to where I'm at and where my hands will go. I'll balance out the patient position and start with placing my body up against the patient so they know where I'm at. I always commence my orthopedic examination by gentle but thorough palpation of the spine. I feel for thoracic or lumbar pain or spasm by palpating the paraspinous muscles. Localizing the pelvis, feeling the lumbosacral junction, performing a tail jack if necessary, and all allows the patient to feel for you طبعا هو هنا انا بس قطعت عشان اوقف جزء الجزء المهم هنا انا عاوز اوريكم شكل الهاندلنج بتاع الحيوان والاسيستنت وهو بيحاول يمسك الحاله ده الوضع المثالي لمسك اي بيشنت لدوج يعني من الاسيستنت ودي خطوات الفيكسيشن خطوات الاكزامينيشن بقى هيبتدي الدكتور يعمل خطوات الاكزامينيشن بتاعته هنشوفها before you palpate the limbs. In the pelvic limbs, I commence with good support, and the first thing I will do is check the patient for proprioception. In this patient, proprioception is present. through a sequential check for range of motion, pain, and resistance. The phalangeal joints, the metasophalangeal joints for thickening, fibrosis, or abnormality is advisable. دكتور عيسم دكتور عيسم دكتور عيسم تقريباً الصوت عنده فصل طب نشوف دكتور عيسم حضرتك سامعني هو الصوت فيه مشكلة هو موجود دكتور عيسم حضرتك سامعني؟ اه بس هو بيقول لي انميوت خلاص تمام كده تمام كده صوت حضرتك رجع رجع طيب اه اتفضل يا فندم بص دكتور هو ساعات الصوت بيقطع يعني بتبقى صوت كويس برضه حضرتك توضح اي اتفضل يا دكتور محمد حضرتك الصوت بتاع الفيديو نفسه بيقطع ف فمش واضح قوي والفيديو نفسه كمان بيقطع طيب خلاص انا والفيديو شغال او بعد ما يخلص يعني بقى. طيب يعني انا صوتي اوضح من صوت الفيديو؟ اه صوت حضرتك اوضح هو ساعات بيقطع بسيط بس كويس يعني مقبول الحمد لله مامي. طيب طيب اوكي ماشي 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 احنا طبعا هنا طريقه الفحص زي ما هو الدكتور كان بيفحص كده شفنا انه هذا خدها سيستميك ابتدى الاول بيشوف النيورال ريفلكسز بتاعت الرجل في ان 
من تحت وبعد كده ابتدى يشوف المفاصل بيعمل فليكشن واكستنشن لكل جوينت والجوينت زي الهب اللي بيعمل ابدكشن وابدكشن او سيركمبكشن يعني بيتحرك في كل الاتجاهات بيفحصه وبعد كده فحص الديجيت وبعد كده بيفحص البون وبيفحص بيفحص السوفت تيشو ده فيديو برضو لجيت اناليسيس لما دي طبعا سجاده واصله بسنسورز على مونيتور بتوضح الخطوات بتاعه الحيوان بيعمل منها اناليسيس يقدر يشوف فيها الموسم اللي فيها فيكشن وانه الخطا الموجود لم موجود في انه لم نبتدي نتكلم على الافيشنز المختلفه اللي احنا ممكن نشوفها في العظم في العظام ودول بنقسمهم للديفلوبمنتال افيكشنز وانفكشنز زي الاوستومايلايتس كده والماسك والنيوتريشنال والبلاستيك والتوماتيك التوماتيك طبعا اللي هو جزء الايه؟ فراكشر الجزء الديفلوبمنتال اللي هو جزء ليه علاقه بتكوين العظم اثناء النمو اشهر جزء عندنا الانجولار ديفورمتي اوف ذا فور لم بنسميهم اسم تاني اسمه ريديال اند انر ديسبليجيا في اكريميو مانديبولار اوستيوباسي وفي الهايبر اوستيودستروفي ودي من الحالات المهمه ريه شويه في الفيلد بس من الحالات المهمه في التشخيص في المالتيبل كارتيليشنس اكسكوزيس في البانوسايتس وطبعا دي اهم واحده فيهم والريتندد انر كارتليج والسكوتش فولد اوستيوباسي طبعا نبدا الاول بالانجلر ديفورمتي هنتكلم عليها بسرعه لان دي من اهم الحاجات اللي ممكن تشوفها في الفيلد الناس اللي شغاله في الفيلد بتاع البيتس بتشوفها كتير في الكلاب انه بيجي فيه ديفيجن موجوده في الفور لم بنقسمهم لكاربس فارس وكاربس فالجرس اللي هو الديفيجن بيبقى انوت او اوت وورد والتبريت بتاعه بيتعمل بكوريكتيف اوستيوتومي دي المعادلات انا يعني هبقى اديكم البرزنتيشن فيها ازاي بنقدر نقيس الديجري بتاعت الديفيجن اللي بنقدر نحكم عليها هنعمل ازاي الجراحه بتاعتنا علشان نعمل كوريكتيف اوستيوتومي منها انا زي كده ان احنا بنعمل لينسنج للالنر علشان نظبط اللينس بتاعها او ان احنا نركب ابريتس بيعمل كوريكشن للانجل. الكرينيو مانديبولار اوستيوباسي غير شويه بس دي بتحصل في الجاينت بريدز وفي البريكوسفاليك بريدز انه يعني بيحصل نان نيوبلاستيك اوفر بروس في المانديبول وفي التمبانيك ولا وبيبقى شيب من بره واضح قوي ان في سويلنج موجود بس الفرق بينه وبين التيومرز الاوستيوباسي يعني ان ده غالبا بيحصل في الاعمار الصغيره مش في الاعمار الكبيره. والاكس ري بتاعته بتبقى دايجنوستيك لانه بيبقى الاوفر جروس موجود في المندوب وموجود في التبانيك الهايبر تروفيك اوستيودستروفي دي من الحاجات المهمه قوي نعم هي ري بس بس احنا بنشوفها في الفيلد ان بيحصل اوفر جروس على الشفت بتاعت اللونج بونز في الاعمار الصغيره والكوز بتاعها انون كوز بيقولوا ان هو ممكن يكون جزء جينيتيك واحيانا يحصل لها سيفيليمتنج لوحديها واحيانا ما بتزيد في الوضع وبتبقى اوبيس كيس. شكلها في اكس ري ان احنا بنلاقي في اوفر جروس موجود وغالبا اكثر الاماكن اللي بتبقى مشهور فيها الاوفر جروس الديس اكستريمتي بتاع الريدس والالما والتبيا والفيبيولا زي ما هو واضح في, في الاشعه كده. واحيانا حالات كثيره تيجي فيها الاوفر جروس ده وفيها انجلر ديفورمتي في الليم وبعد شويه يحصل سيفيليمتنج ليها او ان هي تزيد في الوضع. دي الاوستيو كونتروماتوزس من حاجات الرير شويه بس برضو من اللي كان عندنا في الفيلد انه بيجي في سويلنج موجود في منطقه الشفت بيبقى عباره عن كارتريج حصل له كونتروماتوزس في وسط شفت بتاعت الانيمال وطبعا برضو الفرق بينه وبين الاوستيو ساركوما ان ده بيحصل في اليونج ايجز وبعد شويه ممكن يختفي من نفسه او يحصل براكشر في البونسولوجيكال فراكشر الانوسايتس دي من اهم الافكشنز اللي ممكن تحصل في العظام في الفيلد عندنا انه بيجي الحيوان بيعرج على رجله في اعماق ليها رينج ايج معين اللي هو من سته من ست شهور لحد سنه سنه ونص واللمنس بيحصل له شيفت من لمب لمب مع الوقت ده مرض من الامراض الديفلوبمنتال او جروينج انيمال وبيحصل له سيلف ليميتنج لوحده حتى لما بندي تريننج احنا بنعالج لماتوري لان يعني النون كورتيكوسترويد او ممكن ندي كورتيكوسترويد اندر امبريلا او في الحالات الاميونتي بتاعتها كويسه بتحسن الحاله شويه وبعد شويه بيرجع تاني اللمس يظهر تاني 
ودي الشكوى اللي تبقى مكرره من صاحب الحاله ان لمنس بيختفي وبعد اول ما بيوقف العلاج يبتدي يظهر او يظهر كلمب ثاني في الاكس راي هي ليها اند اوستيا رياكشن يعني بلاقي العظمه من جواها ابتدى يحصل فيها اجزاء من التريبيكيولي موجوده جوه المارو كافيتي جوه العظمه ده عباره عن اندو اوستيا رياكشن جوه العظم بيبقى موجود في كل اللونج بون الريتندد انر كارتليج كور ده من الامراض النادره برضو شويه بس احنا كل دول عشان الديفرنشال دياجنوزيس مع الحالات الموست كومن زي البانوستايتس وبرضو شويه الاوستومايلايتس والاوستوساركوما هم دول اشهر حالات في اللي احنا بنتكلم عليه الريتند ده بيحصل عند الميتافيسز عند الجروس بليتس بيحصل ريتنشن للكارتج فبيحصل اندو كونجرال اوسيفيكيشن بيبان عندي في الاكس راي ان في جزء في الدينس بتاعته اقل شويه جوه الميتافيزيا البارت بتاع العظم زي ما هو واضح كده واحيانا برضو بيبقى كونفيوز شويه مع الاوستوساركوما بس برضو ده من الامراض اللي بتحصل في اليونج ايجز الستش فولد اوستيودستروفي ده من الامراض المشهوره في دكتور عيسى معلش الصوت راح دكتور عيسى حضرتك سامعني دكتور هيثم هو تقريبا دكتور هيثم عنده مشكلة في الكونكشن مأثرة على حتى الكواليتي بتاعت الصوت الشمس دكتور هيثم حضرتك سامعني؟ تقريبا تقريبا خرج طب وان مينيت يا جماعه هكلم تريسم عن ثانيه واحده اكلمه على الموبايل يا جماعه هو راح في مشكله في الكونكشن مؤشر على الصوت او دكتور ريسم وصل تاني يوم دكتور هيثم اتفضل يا دكتور تمام هعمل شير بس للسكرين اه اتفضل معلش يا جماعه الكونكشن حصل فيه مشكله هنرجع آه. تاني للجزء آه. المهم برضو اللي هو جزء الاوستومايلايتس ده آه بالمتعارف عليه كده بيقولوا اللي هو التسوس العظام ان هو بيحصل انفكشن في العظم ده ممكن يخش عن طريق ديسيندنج انفكشن او اسيندنج انفكشن ديسيندنج يعني جاي من السيركوليشن لو في فوكس اوف انفكشن موجوده في اي حته في الجسم ممكن مايكرو اورجانيزم يخش ويعمل ايه انفكشن في العظم او مد... او الاسيندنج انه بيخش عن طريق ووند من اشهر الاماكن اللي ممكن يحصل فيها ممكن بريف بس سريع للحته اللي فاتت لان الصوت كان بيقطع فيها قبل ما حاجه تخرج قبل آه. الاوستومايلايتس اه اه الجزء اللي قبله اه طيب اوكي قطع شويه قبل ما تخرج طيب احنا كنا بس بنتكلم على الاشكال المختلفه للديفلوبنج اوستو اوستيوباسي اخر واحده فيهم كانت الريتندد انر كارتليش كور دي بيحصل في الجروينج انيمال انه احيانا يحصل ريتنشن للكارتليج في الجزء بتاع الجروس بليت ويبان قدامي في العظمه زي ما هو باين في الاكس راي كده انه في جزء جوه الميتافيسز في اوستوليتيك رياكشن شويه او لو دينستي في العظم شويه وهو كونفيوزد شويه مع الاوستيو ساركوما اللي هي التيومرز بتاعت العظم بس احنا ده الفرق ما بينهم ان ده بيحصل في الاعمار الصغيره في اليونج ايجز الاوستيو ساركوما غالبا بتحصل في الاعمار الكبيره وقلنا السكوتش فولد اوستيوباسي او اوستيو ديستروفي ده مرض مشهور بيحصل في اوروبا يعني في القطط 
نوع اسمه سكوتش فولد مش موجود عندنا هنا في مصر ريري يعني ان احنا نشوف الجزء بقى المهم تاني يبقى اول مره كان مهم في اللي فات وكانت بانوستايتس ده اكتر حاجه بنشوفها وتاني حاجه ممكن نشوفها كتير الاوستومايلايتس اللي هو الانفكشن اوف ذا بون وزي ما قلنا الروت اوف انفكشن ممكن يحصل ديسيندنج او اسيندنج اشهر الاماكن اللي ممكن يحصل فيها طبعا في الديجيت لما بيحصل وند في الانتر ديجيتال سبيس او في الانتر ديجيتال فولد وبيخش يبتدي يسرح يخش على الديجيت على ال العقل الصوابع يعني وطبعا برضه من اشهرهم اللي بيحصل عند الروت اوف تيس في المانديبل وبيحصل اللي هو البري ابيكال ابسس انه يبقى فيه خراج موجود على الروت اوف ذا تيس وغالبا بيبقى في المولر تيس زي ما باين في الاكس راي طبعا دول تشخيصهم بيبان في الاكس راي حالات الاوستومايلايتس دي احيانا بتوصل ان احنا نعمل امبيوتيشن للجزء اللي فيه الانفكشن لان الانفكشن ممكن يسرح ويخش في الايه في بقيه البون كله او ممكن يعمل توكسيميا ويموت الحيوان آه الحاجات النيوتريشنال اللي ممكن تحصل الامراض النيوتريشنال ممكن تحصل في العظم آه هما اشهر مرضين عندنا هما الريكتس والاوستومايليشي الريكتس ده عباره عن آه ابنورمال آه ريشيو ما بين الكالسيوم والفوسفورس يا ديكريس في الكالسيوم يا آه آه انكريس في الفوسفورس وطبعا احنا اشهر فورم موجوده عندنا في الفيلد هي السكندري هايبر باراثايروديزم اللي هو نيوتريشنال هايبر باراثايروديزم في اليونج ايجز في الحيوانات الصغيره لو قعدوا ياكلوا رشن عالي في الفوسفورس وهو خارج من الجسم بيضطر الباراسورمون يعلى شويه فيروح عامل كليشن للكالسيوم يسحب كالسيوم فيبتدي يحصل عندي الكالسيوم ديفيشنسي في العظم ويبتدي يحصل الريكتس وطبعا ده بيبان عندي في شكل انجولار ديفورمتي في اللم اللم بتبان بشكل كده في الـ في الـ في الكيسز الساينس بتاعتها ضعيفه مش قويه قوي يعني لسه ما ظهرش ديفورمتي عاليه البروجنوز بتاعها كويس ان هو لما بياخد كالسيوم انتيك آه كويس او ان هو بياخدوا سبلمنت درجز او ياخدوا انجكشن كل ده ممكن يصلح الوضع وطبعا اهم حاجه في القصه دي انه يقف على ارضيه سوفت علشان الديفورمتي ما تقعدش تزيد لحد ما الكالسيوم آه يبتدي ياخد الدينستي بتاعته او القوه بتاعته. الاوستومايليشيا آه دي رير شويه آه في الكلاب يعني ما بنشوفهاش كتير هي طبعا مشهوره في البني ادمين في الاعمار الكبيره مع الديسربنس في الهرمون ان يبتدي يحصل كليشن للكالسيوم من العظم في آه في الماتيور بول ويبتدي يحصل ديفورمتي ااا ونشا... ونلاقي فيه اندو اوستر رياكشن زي اللي موجود كده. ااا الاوستوساركوما طبعا ودي من الحاجات المهمه قوي اللي هو تيومر اوف ذا بون. ااا غالبا احنا الاوستوساركوما في الفيلد ما بنلاقيهاش برايمري، رير جدا نلاقي برايمري اوستوساركوما، هي غالبا بتبقى سكندري. وبيبقى البرايمري تيومر الموجود في الجسم غالبا بيبقى بروستاتيك تيومر وبعد شويه ما بيحصل له ميتاستاسيس بيبتدي ينتشر ويخش في العظم. شكله في العظم زي ما احنا شايفين كده بيبتدي باوفر جروس شويه في العظم وبعد شويه الخلايا بتاعه التيومر بتبقى اندفرنشيتد سيلز مش اوستيوسايت يعني فيبتدي يحصل اوستوليتيك رياكشن في العظم وبتخلص الوضع في انه العظمه بتتكسر. آه وطبعا من شروطه الاساسيه او يعني غالبا بيبقى في الاعمار الكبيره. واول ما بنشوف حاله زي كده على طول بن بندور على البروستيت بنطمن اذا كان في بروستاتيك تيومر ولا ما فيش يعني ده برايمري تيومر ولا هو سكندري البروستاتيك تيومر التريتمنت بتاعه طبعا صعب آه جزء جراحي فيه ممكن ان احنا نعمل امبيوتيشن للليمب اللي فيها اس ساركوما او ان احنا نعمل جرافت ان احنا نعمل اوستيوتومي نشيل الجزء من العظمه اللي فيه البن اللي فيه الاس ساركوما وبنعمل آه كورتيكال بون جرافت ده بالنسبه للحالات اللي هي المشهوره في العظم في اصابات العظم بس. هتكلم برضو بسرعه كده على اشهر الحالات اللي احنا ممكن نقابلها في العيادات في الاورثوبيديك ونيورولوجيكال كونديشنز بسرعه كده علشان البرزنتيشن ما تاخدش وقت طويل. احنا طبعا اتكلمنا كتير في المواضيع دي وانا بتكلم بريف كده بقول عناوين واشهر الحاجات على قد الوقت واحنا ان شاء الله هنحاول نظبط مع النقابه ان شاء الله مره نعمل ناخد كل جزء نتكلم عليه بالتفصيل. احنا احنا زي ما حضرتك بتقول يا دكتور احنا طبعا نفسنا نقعد مع حضرتك ايام وساعات <تصفيق> فاحنا طبعا عشان احنا حبينا ان ناخد النهارده بريف فعلا وان شاء الله احنا الزملاء بنوعدهم ان احنا هنقسمهم على اكتر من نفشل الفتره الجايه ان شاء الله بحيث ان كله يستفاد من من التوبكس كلها مع حضرتك ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله طيب انا هتكلم على اهم مراضين بس موجودين في خمس دقائق كده وبعد كده يعني دول دول اسامي الامراض اللي احنا ممكن نقابلهم في الفور لم في الشولدر في الامراض بتاعت الشولدر الاوستيوكوندروزس والقلب طبعا الديسبليجيا دي من اهم الامراض بتاعت الفور لم 
اللي هي بنبقى فيها فراجمنتد ميدل كورونويد بروسيس والان يونايتد انكونيان بروسيس دول اكتر امراضين مشهورين وطبعا الان يونايتد انكونيان ده هو اكتر واحد احنا بنشوفه وطبعا اسو ارسالاتيس بتاعه القلب ده شكلها في الاكس راي الاسو كوروزس برضه ده ممكن يحصل اللي هو ان جزء من من الارتش ارتيكل كراتش يحصل له سيبريشن وينزل جوه الجوينت ونفرقش طبعا من الحاجات المشهورة عندنا في الأورسو فيليكس إنفكشنز والكاربا تايبر فيليكس في هايبر إكستنشن دي احنا بنشوفها كتير اللي هو اللاكس دي اللي بتحصل في الكاربا جوينت ودي السبلينت بتاعها طريقة العلاج بتاعها في الهايد لمب طبعا أشهر مرضين عندنا الهيب ديسبليشيا وده التست بتاعها بس هوريكم الفيديو بتاعه علشان ده مهم قوي <تصفيق> التست بتاعها ده من اهم طرق التشخيص بتاعت الهيب ديسبليجيا تاني اشهر مرض ممكن يحصل في الريك في الهايند ريم في جزء السايكل اللي هو الرابشر كروشيت برضه هوريكم التست بتاعه درور تيست شكل درور تيست بوزيتيف آه ان احنا لما بنحط الجوينت في اللاي في انستابيلتي آه ده الدور المختلفه للعلاج بتاعتها آه وكده انا يعني اتكلمت عن اهم الاجزاء اللي ممكن نتكلم عليها في الاورثوبيديك افكشنز والف شكر لحضراتكم وان شاء الله على لقاءات ثانيه نتكلم فيها آه بقيه الحاجات ان شاء الله شكرا لحضرتك يا دكتور هيثم والله مش عارفين نقول لحضرتك ايه يعني طبعا احنا ما لحقناش نشبع من حضرتك اكيد بس طبعا يعني وجود حضرتك معانا ولو الوقت صغير ده شرف لينا واضافه كبيره جدا للايفنت فميرسي جدا لحضرتك والمعلومات القيمه ان شاء الله فيري سون نصدر مع حضرتك اكتر من ليكشر بحيث نفتح التوبكس كلها باستفاضه ونفيد زمايلنا كلهم ان شاء الله يعني ان شاء الله ان شاء الله لو ينفع يا دكتور بس حتى تعمل لنا شير للفيديوز دي للزملاء نشيرها لهم على التليجرام او على الجروبس بتاعت الواتساب تمام تاني يبقى في محاضره اكثر تفصيلا ان شاء الله لان طبعا عارفين ان احنا مربوطين بوقت معين والساعه 3 هيجي دكتور او الساعه 3 الا ربع ممكن يبقى معانا دكتور تشين رايان يعني في الربع خمس دقائق او 10 دقائق هيكون معانا او يعني بالكثير قوي الساعه 3 فمحتاجين لا نقعد مثلا ساعه ونص ساعتين نسمع اكتر في في المحاضره دي. ان شاء الله. فبس هي اوفر فيو يعني بنشكر حضرتك عليه شكرا جزيلا ويعني يعني لينا شرف بوجود حضرتك. تسلم تسلم يا دكتور محمد لا طبعا انا هبعت لكم البرزنتيشن كامله بالفيديوز ونقدر نشيرها طبعا لكل الناس يعني ان شاء الله يستفيدوا منها ان شاء الله ان شاء الله. شكرا شكرا. دكتور فريزا مكمل معانا طبعا ان شاء الله. وبنشكر حضرتك دلوقتي آه احنا هنبدا مع زملائنا آه الشركات الراعيه علينا بنشكرهم جدا آه ونشكر دورهم المجتمعي على السبورتنج اللي فاتت زمايلهم الاطباء البيطريين آه سواء في مصر او في الوطن العربي وان شاء الله هنبدا آه مع آه بيتال او بيتال هي المين سبونسر بتاعنا او الدايموند سبونسر آه آه هنعرض الفيديو الاول من بيتال
اه حد بيقول لي ان الفيديو من غير صوت طب احنا هنجرب نشغله تاني تقريبا في مشكلة في الصوت اتفضل يا دكتورة دينا تفضلي معانا دكتور دينا ممكن حضرتك تفردي الفيديو برضه اه دكتور دينا مش معايا انا دكتور دينا حضرتك معايا دكتور دينا تمام يا دكتورة دينا ميرسي جدا انا بس عايز ابعت لحضرتك افتحي المايك وبعد اذنك ترحبي معانا بالزمان اتفضلي ازيك يا دكتورة دينا اخبارك ايه؟ الصوت الصوت عندك مش ظاهر بس نعم مفيش صوت عندك اعملي جوين اوديو اه كده الصوت بدا يظهر مساء الخير ازيك يا دكتور محمد ازيك يا دكتور اهلا وسهلا دكتور دينا شكرا جدا لمحاضره حضرتك اللي احنا كلنا استفدنا بيها 
أنا دينا دوبالا بشتغل أسوشيت كوريك مانجر في بيتاف أهلا بحضراتكم جميعا إحنا بنحب نشكر برضو ذاتس أون لاين إن هما يعني أتحوا لنا الفرصة إن إحنا نقابل حضراتكم إحنا بيتاف إحنا إحدى قطاعات شركة أي سي القطاع المتخصص في الحيوانات الأليفة إحنا مسؤولين عن الفاكسينز والدراجز المسؤولة عن التست احنا برضو وكيل للثري مالتي ناشنال ذاتك داير اني مالتي ان بوينجر ان دهاين وصعبة جدا ان احنا مع حضرات كلها مرحبا بك يا دكتورة دينا ويعني نشكرك واحنا ان شاء الله دائما بتال بتسعى دورها المجتمعي ان هي خدمة لزملائها او للاطباء البيطريين ان هم ياخدوا المعلومات من المصادر الصح ليها فبنشكر حضرتك وبنشكر الشركة على الدور المجتمع العظيم اللي انتم بتقدوه وان شاء الله يبقى ان شاء الله مستمرين مع بعض في دعم الاطباء البيطريين ان هم يتعلموا يوصلوا لاعلى مستويات من التطور ان شاء الله. هيكون معانا دلوقتي دكتور محمد امين فارما فيت او بلاتينيوم سبونسر اتفضل دكتور محمد هيشير فيديو بتاع فارما فيت. هو الصوت مش شغال يا دكتور محمد في مشكلة عندك بس في الصوت يا دكتور محمد نظبطها وبقيت تشغيل الفيديو تاني اشتغل كده اه دكتور محمد سماني دكتور محمد امين مرحب بيك يا دكتور محمد انا سلام حضرتك صوتك تمام اه ممكن تشغل الفيديو بعد اذنك لانه لسه ما ظهرش تمام يا دكتور محمد كده بدا يشتغل
डॉक्टर मोहम्मद डॉक्टर मोहम्मद अमीन يا ريت بس لو الصوت مش ظابط عندك يا دكتور يعني سامعني كويس ولا لا؟ ألو محمد زيد تمام الحمد لله انا سامع كويس برحب بحضرتك انا بيك انت حضرتك شغلت فيديو كان في فيديو تاني حضرتك كنت المفروض تعرضه صح؟ اه ما اشتغلش عندي انا اشتغل عندي فيديو واحد ايه <تصفيق> معلش يا جماعه بس الكونكشن بتاثر على الصوت دكتور محمد واضح لك ان في مشكله فممكن لو حد حابب تاخد حد تاني من الزملاء بعد كده انا عارف اوكي يا دكتور اوكي اتفضل يا I'm going to show you a video on the video chum and the Aryun, the Holland Egyptian company, the platinum sponsor of the Tenet Tana. شركة ترامب يا جماعة أو رويال هولاند ايجيبشن كومباني وعدونا إن في هدايا مجانية هنوزعها على حضراتكم في الكلينكس بتاعتكم دي حاجة هدية منهم لكل الناس اللي حضروا معانا المحاضرة إن شاء الله دي هتوصل لكم إن شاء الله الأعداد بتاعتكم كلها يعني فور فري إحنا معانا دكتور أحمد سمير دكتور أحمد حضرتك سامعني؟ ايوه يا باشا سامعك ازيك يا ريس اخبار حضرتك ايه؟ ازيك يا دكتور محمد عامل ايه؟ ازيك اخبارك؟ الحمد لله يا دكتور احمد سمير ومعمل ليبتو بيت لاب او بلاتينيوم سبونسر واعتقد حضرتك عندك فيديو لطيف عن المعمل يا دكتور احمد فكنا حابين آه ايوه موجود انا اتشرف بس بالساده الزملاء وبرحب بيهم وكل سنه وانتم طيبين ومشكر جدا على المجهود الجميل اللي انت 
وان شاء الله يعني 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 نحوز رضاكم يعني ان شاء الله واعجابكم استاذنا حضرتك غالي عندنا طبعا يعني ما فيهاش كلام حبيبي ربنا يبارك لك ربنا يكرمك حضرتك حضرتك تقدر تشير من عند حضرتك الفيديو؟ اه تمام معمل ليبتوفيت هو المعمل البيطري الخاص الوحيد في مصر لتحاليل الحيوانات الأليفة والبرية وحيوانات المزرعة وهو المعمل الأول من نوعه المعتمد الحاصل على شهادة الأيزو في الاختبارات البيطرية معمل ليبتوفيت يقدم جميع الخدمات التشخيصية من تحاليل صورة الدم الكاملة وتحاليل وظائف الكبد والكلى والبنكرياس وطفيليات الدم وتحاليل البول والبراز كما نقدم خدمة تحديد الميعاد المناسب للتزاوج في الكلاب بمنتهى الدقة من خلال تحليل البروجسترون وكذلك الهرمونات الأخرى كما يقوم المعمل بتحليل الأنسجة والأورام وأيضا تحاليل المزارع البكتيرية والفطرية وكل هذا تم ليس لأحدث الأجهزة فحسب وإنما على أيدي خبراء وعلماء متخصصين كل في مجاله حاصلين على جوائز الدولة وعلى نوط الامتياز من الدرجة الأولى من السيد رئيس الجمهورية في مجال العلوم البيطرية والزراعية يمتاز معمل ليبتوفيت بتجميع العينات بالطرق السليمة من جميع أنحاء القاهرة الكبرى وبعض المحافظات في أسرع وقت ممكن معمل ليبتوفيت شعارنا الدقة التخصص المستقية ليبتوفيت your partner of success تمام دكتور احمد ميرسي على الفيديو الجميل ده حبيبي ربنا يخليك يا حبيبي ربنا يكرمك وطبعا فرص عظيمه وان شاء الله مزيد من التفوق والنجاح يعني ان شاء الله في ناس بتسال حضرتك المعمل فين كده احنا ان شاء الله هنشير كل الداتا بتاعت السبونسرز بتوعنا على الجروبات بتاعتنا وعلى الفيسبوك بيج لينكات البروفايل البيجز بتاعتهم اماكنهم والخدمات اللي بتقدمها ان شاء الله حبيبي يا دكتور محمد ان شاء الله شكرا لي شكرا لحضرتك يا فندم شكرا لحضرتك يا فندم تمام دكتور محمد امين ايوه كده الفيديو ظهر يا دكتور محمد ده الفيديو الثاني اللي كان ما اشتغلش مع حضرتك <تصفيق> شكرا دكتور محمد امين هو الفيديو ده اللي انا خدت بالي دي الفيديو الخاص بالايجنسي بتاعت يونايتد بايوميد اعتقد كده سمعنا دكتور محمد دكتور محمد يا دكتور محمد تمام يا فندم دي ده الفيديو اللي انا خدت بالي منه ده يونايتد بايوميد ايجنسي صح كده؟ تمام مظبوط أنا حابب أشكر حضرتك جدا على أن أنت مجمع الدكاترة الجميلة دي كلها معانا ونتمنى طبعا بنشكر الدكتور هيثم فغالي على السيشن الجميل وطبعا زي ما هو وعدنا أن هو هيعمل كذا سيشن تاني مع معاكم إن شاء الله طبعا بقية الضيوف اللي هي حضورنا يعني إن شاء الله النهارده أه حابب برضه اشكر كل الساده الزملاء اللي موجودين ونتمنى دايما احنا كفارما وك 
كل الشركاء النجاح معانا يعني ان احنا دايما نبقى عند حسن ظنهم وان احنا دايما نبقى قادرين نعمل لهم السبورت اللي هم محتاجينه مننا دايما ان شاء الله يعني شكرا لك محمد وشكرا على دوركم المجتمعي اللي بتقدموه وان شاء الله دايما بيتس اونلاين اكاديمي شركاء نجاح معاكم ومع كل الزملاء والشركات والاصدقاء اللي في مصر والوطن العربي ان شاء الله يعني. ان شاء الله شكرا لك محمد شكرا لك محمد اتفضل فندم آه كده احنا كان معانا بتال كان معانا آه فارماويت ايجنسي اللي انت بتعمل كان معانا تشامب وكان معانا ليبتو فيت لاب آه دول دايما انتوا بتاعتين سبونسر بتوعنا آه وما ننساش برضه نشكر جولدن سبونسر بتوعنا فوينكس سكان فيت لاب وفيت وورك كامباني او ابلكيشن كل الداتا بتاعت السبونسر بتاعنا وي ويل شير ات مع الفيديوز برضه اللي عرضناها في المحاضره هنعرضها تاني لحضراتكم مع ريكورد المحاضره هنبعتها لكم هنبعتها لكم الفيسبوك بيج بتاعتهم للتواصل معاهم اي معلومات محتاجين عن الشركات دي هنبعتها لكم ان شاء الله وان شاء الله نفضل شركاء نجاح معاهم كلهم ومكملين معانا في مسيره خدمه الاطباء البيطريين ان شاء الله. احنا دلوقتي هنستقبل دكتور تشاني ريان ودكتور ناتاشا لي ودكتور مايكل فليب عشان يستارت دكتور تشاني التقديم اللي هو سافا آه ويعمل انتروداكشن آه ليها فخلال 3 مينتس هيكونوا آه جوين معانا ان شاء الله هم جوين ويلكم دكتور تشين رايان دكتور تشين رايان ويلكم دكتور ناتاشا اند ويلكم دكتور مايكل لابن How are you, Dr. Chain Ryan? Okay, you have unmuted me. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I can see Mike and uh, Natasha there. Hi, guys. You're still um, muted at the moment. But... I will make uh, them uh, co host for me. Yep, please. Okay, and I will make you also. Good Hi, Mike. Good morning. It's great Hi. to see you guys. Fantastic. Beautiful day in Colorado. Is it? It was an evening now in Singapore and getting hot again as normal. You know, hot, getting to the hot time yeah. of year, one soon coming. Hi, Nat. How are you? Hi, hi. How are you guys? How are you? How are you? Yeah, Mike, right? Nat, you and Mike know each other, right? Yes. Well, I know of Mike. Yes. Mike is very, <laughs> very popular. I know of you. <laughs> So, very popular girl well, that's see. that's nice to know of course <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks a lot I'm yeah. for letting us come today so Mohammed when do you want to Hello. start um, after one minute we'll start uh, my name is Mohammed Ashraf I am uh, the host from Egypt with Dr. Mohammed Nabil welcome to you Dr. Chen Ryan welcome Dr. Michael welcome Dr. Natasha we are very proud and very happy to join you in an amazing and uh, fantastic uh, event for uh, veterinary doctors in Egypt and uh, all of Egyptian veterinary doctors are waiting for this event. Uh, I hope uh, they will be happy uh, to uh, listen the new guidelines for pets, uh, COVID-19 and pets, uh, uh, what is uh, the new and what is the new updates for this topic? It is very important for all veterinary doctors and the veterinary owners, uh, and sorry for pet owners. Uh, so we want to know what is the updates for these topics and what is the advice of animal welfare for uh, veterinary doctors. Uh, and I am happy to listen for you, Dr. Chayan, to uh, introduce uh, the Wasafa and uh, to our colleagues and to start our uh, event. Uh, you can start now uh, and uh, we are uh, listening for you.
Okay, I'll, uh, Mike and Nash, uh, Nat, I'll just give a quick introduction and then I'll pass it over to you, okay? Okay. I hope you can see that, everybody. Yes, I'm seeing Okay, it. excellent. My name is uh, Shane Ryan. I'm the president of the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, and I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to Wasaba before we introduce our two speakers of this evening. If I can get my screen to work. Here we go. Wasaba, we're an association of associations. We do not have individual membership. We have currently 113 member associations from all around the world representing well over 200,000 veterinary professionals. We don't yet have an association from Egypt, so I hope that that will change in the near future. Who are we? We are a global community. We like to think of ourselves as a global community. And the purpose of this community is to ensure that all companion animals everywhere in the world receive the veterinary care that they need for their optimal health and welfare. It's a big, bold vision. And to achieve this vision, we have our mission, and that is to develop a educated, committed, and global collaborative community of veterinary peers. And this is why we're out here this evening to do this educational process. How do we accomplish this mission? We have four pillars of activities, four core uh, responsibilities that we take on. They are global education, standardization and global guideline projects, One Health initiatives, and animal wellness and welfare. And I'll just very briefly touch on these before I continue. With the global guidelines, we have many of these currently and more in process. Our most popular ones uh, internationally at the moment are our vaccination, nutrition and pain management guidelines. We have most recently produced our latest guidelines, which is our list of essential medicines for cats and dogs, which is particularly useful in regions or in countries where you may have difficulty accessing essential veterinary medicines that you require to practice as a competent veterinary professional. The previous ones before that, which both Natasha and I worked on, were the animal welfare guidelines. These are relevant for your everyday practice and I would encourage you to go and have a look at them at the wasaba.org website. But the reason we're here tonight is one of the other core pillars is continuing education. And the purpose of our continuing education mandate is to encourage learning and professional development, certainly of companion animal practitioners, but more importantly, uh, enable our member associations to develop their own self-sufficiency in continuing education programs. So we don't want to be here doing this forever. We want to encourage our local members, our local veterinarians, to take up the torch and run the continuing education programs themselves to ensure that their members have got the latest information available. The last figures that I have to hand was in 2018. We had 40 meetings worldwide, which had over 4,000 delegates. That's face-to-face -face meetings. We had a very large number in Africa, and we worked with the Wasaba Foundation with AFSCAN, which is the African Small Companion Animal Network, to expand Wasaba CE in Africa. We don't do a lot yet in Northern Africa, but we hope to be able to do more in the near future. So tonight, continuing on to that, our global education uh, effort this evening is this COVID-19 webinar. We have two excellent speakers this evening. Um, we have Professor Michael Lappin from Colorado State University, and we have Dr. Natasha Lee from uh, Malaysia. Now I'm going to have to go to a presenter view to see the, um, uh, the write-ups here. So Professor Michael Lappin, I hope this works, here we go, is a small animal internal medicine specialist from Colorado State University. Dr Lappin studies infectious diseases of dogs and cats and is currently the chair of our Wasava One Health Committee. So that's another one of our core pillars. He has been working very closely with others during the COVID pandemic 
to try to provide accurate information to veterinary care providers and pet owners concerned about their companion animals. So tonight he'll be speaking on SARS-CoV-2 infection in companion animals and the risk to pet owners and veterinary staff. Our other speaker this evening is Dr Natasha Lee. And Natasha is a veterinarian from Malaysia with over 15 years of experience in animal welfare. She has managed large companion animal projects across Asia for world animal protection and has also led a campaign to include animal welfare science into the veterinary curricula across Asia by providing training to more than 125 veterinary schools. She currently runs an animal welfare consultancy and works with other organisations to carry out the management, monitoring and training in animal welfare. Natasha is the Vice Chair of the Wasabas Animal Wellness and Welfare Committee and is on the International Advisory Board for the Alliance for Contraception in Cats and Dogs. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to Michael to speak this evening on SARS-CoV-2 infection in companion animals. Michael, please, over to you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Chen. I can stop, excuse me. All Sorry, right. Michael? Michael? Thank you very much. I just need to switch over the screen share. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chen. But you mentioned that Egypt is not about the Watsaba? That's right. Not yet. We will, uh, Dr. Chen, with you. We are planning to make it with you. We would encourage you to, to join us and join our community. We have our meeting, our annual meeting this September. And I think if you're going to apply for membership this year, you would need to do so within the next couple of months, and we can certainly give you the details on how to do that. Okay. Should we, what should we do exactly, Dr. Chi? If you contact me, I'll let you know. Okay, I will contact you. Okay. okay. Dr. Michael? Yes. Dr. Michael. Very good. Thank you very much for that great introduction, Shane. And that's very exciting to hear the conversation about potentially Egypt ultimately joining us with Wasava. That would be fantastic. I've got to admit, I'm very, very sad to be in Colorado and not in Egypt to meet you in person. It's been one of the places that I've not ever gotten to visit in my life. And Hopefully in the near future, we'll be through this pandemic and we can all be together again. I've been working with the One Health Committee for a number of years now and look forward to sharing with you some of the opinions from our group as well as other groups around internationally about this virus, the SARS-CoV-2, that causes the syndrome in people, COVID-19. As we just heard from Shane, we're very fortunate to have a One Health Committee and sad to report that our founder has left us now, but Michael's dream was to have a One Health Committee and I was quite honored to be invited to be part of that from the start. But most importantly, I wanted to share with you that we have representatives from the CDC Casey Barton Baravesh is part of that American Center for Disease Control. She's in charge of the healthy pets, healthy people. So that gives us uh, quite a lot of strength having the access to that group. And then Gregorio Torres, who's worked very much with rabies, is our representative from OIE. So we feel very fortunate to have their organizations represented on our committee. But we're also fortunate to have uh, two medical doctors. And so we're really working hard on the whole One Health concept. And now that we know that SARS-CoV-2 is a reverse zoonosis, meaning the infected person can infect a companion animal, now that we know that, this is truly a global One Health issue. But before I move on, I do want to emphasize that there is still to date no documented case where the owner infected their dog or their cat. There's no data that suggests that that dog or cat passed it on to the next person. What we're hopeful is that will continue 
over the pandemic and may relate to the fact that they may not be shedding enough virus to infect the new person for a very long time period. And I'll show you some information that supports that as we go through my part of the lecture today. This is such an important welfare issue as well, and so I'm quite honored to get to speak with uh, Dr. Lee and Dr. Ryan because of their great work. What we'll emphasize at the end of my talk and then build forward with Natasha is that these animals are probably of minimal risk to the next human, and so their rights should be protected. We don't want them being relinquished. They don't need to be put out on the street. And I'll show you some of the recommendations and why I say that. But again, very nice to be with you. And now I'll spend about 28 minutes talking about some of the issues that we know, mainly about dogs and cats in today's webinar. We were very excited to be part of the American Association of Feline Practitioners event, the zoonosis guidelines. I happen to chair that committee as well, but we were quite honored to have Wasava, as well as the International Society of Feline Medicine, endorse our guidelines. We'll be posting a video statement on the AAFP website next week discussing the SARS-CoV-2 virus as a reverse zoonosis. But I think what we're all doing together today is trying to make sure that accurate information is available to people all around the world. And so working with Wasava and ISFM, the feline groups, it's really important because all those access points can get information to vets as well as hopefully to owners. We always have to start the science part of this discussion with, we might have to change the lecture tomorrow. It is amazing how much new information comes, even on a daily basis. And I always start my day with some of my friends like Dr. Ryan in, in Singapore, Vanessa Bars in Hong Kong, a lot of our members in the European continent. I'm always starting my day here at 6 a.m. in Colorado reading about the new discoveries. And so please remember, keep up with the different postings from different educational sources and scientific sources because these things certainly can change. I'm glad we're recording this webinar so you can go back and look at some of these slides in greater detail because of our short timeline. But I do believe that Wasava, and working with that particular group, I believe that we are doing a good job distilling this massive amount of information into easily readable, at least in English, and then translated into multiple other languages. The information that's important, what we're doing on our site, I'll show you in a few minutes, is getting the information, hopefully, to those 113 members, and then they disseminate to all the veterinarians. But I do believe that WHO, the Center for Disease Control in America, with our international angle as well, and then OIE, are probably some of your safest places to evaluate information. The ProMed group is also very good for finding new things quickly, and so I check that one pretty much every day to see what's new with this virus. And then our International Society of Companion Animal Infectious Diseases also has many of the Wasava MIDI members, like Scott Weiss in Canada. He's involved with ISCADE. I'm with ISCADE. Jane Sykes from ISCADE is also on continuing education for the Wasava group. So many of us around the world are attempting to give you accurate information. So until recently, Dr. Michael Day, uh, Mary McCondas, we were the kind of the team gathering the information to post on the Wasava website. But if you would visit our COVID-19 advice and resources area, 
we do have those materials reviewed by Casey and Gregorio, our CDC and OIE members, and try to get things to you fairly shortly after new discoveries are made. And in fact, after our webinar today, I'll be finishing this week's E-Shot, which is basically what's happened with this virus in dogs and cats and other companion animals within the last one to two weeks. So I'll share to you today what's happened uh, recently as well, but that will then ultimately be posted on this website. I do want to mention the ISCAID group since many of our members on the scientific community for WASAVA are also part of ISCAID. And so obviously many groups making recommendations around the world. But this one's an interesting group because we do have members from Europe as well as Asia as well as the United States distilling information. In. And in fact, this week, we just posted our recommendations for cats, and I'll share some of those guidelines with you today. But let's start with this new virus, and you're in the area that had MERS a few years ago. We had our SARS-CoV-1 in Asia and several other countries back in 2000. 3, 2004. So we've been familiar with the beta coronaviruses of people for a number of years. But this new virus, it's really important that we remind our owners and then some veterinarians that think it could be directly related to our regular cat and dog coronaviruses. And it's not. This coronavirus, which did jump from an animal, probably the bat, this coronavirus prefers people and is mainly transmitted person to person with the occasional transmission to a companion animal. So again, the syndrome in people is called COVID-19. The virus is SARS-CoV-2. In the early stages of work with companion animals in particular, there was a lot of confusion because not everybody understood what the test results may mean. Now we have more tests available, and many countries like North America are now applying those, not just to people, to try to slow the pandemic, perhaps determine when people should go back to work. But we're also now using it limitedly in dogs and cats, as we'll talk through the lecture today. But just to remind you, when antibodies develop, that generally means the virus has entered the body. The body cared that it was there. And so we can use antibodies to prove prior exposure. And sometimes those antibodies also correlate to immunity, which is what we're attempting to determine now for dogs, cats, and people. The virus isolation is still always the best to prove that there's currently an infection because that proves the virus is alive. And this is where in the early parts of the pandemic, it's much easier to do polymerase chain reaction, in this case, quantitative reverse transcriptase, PCR. That's quite easy to do. And so everybody in the world is now doing those assays, and probably appropriately, including Colorado State University. But remember those viral nucleic acids, they don't always mean there is still live virus. A good example is in some of the early data from cruise ships where the people were trapped and having the syndrome while they were on those boats. They were reporting things like the virus being on handrails for out to 17 days. Well, that was nucleic acids, RNA of the virus, not necessarily live virus. And so now we know a lot more as different groups that can work at the biosafety level three, remember this is a dangerous virus, but those that can work at the BSL three level now can do virus isolation, and we're getting more information about how long people shed or pass the virus, as well as domestic pets. 
You know how we're always thinking in our lives when something important happens, what were you doing? I'm not sure what Natasha and Shane were doing on uh, December 30th when this first posting came out from po ProMed, but I was at the bottom of the United States Grand Canyon. So I came out of a hiking trip to a global pandemic. It's pretty crazy. But isn't that numbers amazing? These are from yesterday at WHO with now over 4 million presumed cases. And so this experience has been a little bit different than MERS in the Middle East. This one's been a little bit different than SARS-CoV-1 with unfortunately now being a global pandemic. But I wanted to make sure that you keep these numbers in mind as we shift to dogs and cats now, because in contrast, the numbers of proven dogs and cats with the infection are minuscule. I really think we should continue to emphasize to our owners and our staff that this is a human disease. And so when I go to the clinic later, I'm going to be wearing my mask just like everybody else in the building to lessen people-to-people -people droplet transmission. And I'll show you our current guidelines for handling the pets before we finish the lecture. So this was a very interesting paper that's been debated a lot already. What was the jump from probably the bat into the human? So there was some discussion about uh, feeding those tissues to dogs could somehow have related to the ultimate pandemic. That is, will be debated, I'm sure, for years. Uh, congratulations to these authors. However, it's probably not clinically relevant, and dogs seem to be less permissive to this virus than dogs, or excuse me, cats, people, or ferrets. So again, the dog is really kind of dropping lower and lower on our concern list. I don't know if there have ever been two dogs with more words written about them in the history of the world. When the Hong Kong team started quarantining the pets of people with COVID-19 and doing repeated testing, that first Pomeranian and then the German Shepherd dog to follow generated a lot of information. And then, of course, one cat of the 18 tested repeatedly, ultimately was positive. So this data does support my statement earlier that if a person is actively shedding SARS-CoV-2, remember these people all had COVID-19 illness, it could be at a level that could infect some animals. But please look at the ratio of positive animals to those tested. Again, in that 5% range, even if those pets were living with a currently ill person before they were quarantined. That actually, uh, first data from the dogs actually made it into nature just yesterday or the day before. So congratulations to our friends in Hong Kong for that program. And then, of course, in the United States, we got all excited when our first pug with SARS-CoV-2 was reported. And we were talking about this with ISCADE just a couple of days ago. We're getting close now. Well, we'll probably quit having a press release for every single positive animal. We're now up to seven cats and four dogs proven as a reverse zoonosis to be infected. So probably we don't have to have a press release for everyone. We know that it can happen. But as we test more dogs and cats, I think you'll learn, like we're learning in the United States, that even though it can happen as a reverse zoonosis, it's actually not common and not easy compared to what we see in our two-legged animals. The Bronx Zoo large cats led to a lot of excitement and multiple cats on that exhibit that had some of the respiratory and gastrointestinal signs. Some of those cats, in fact, the initial seven, all did ultimately become positive. But I have been encouraging 
uh, domestic cat veterinarians to remember that the captive cats generally are inbred, which is why they're often predisposed to things like feline infectious peritonitis virus. And so when we talk about cat-to-cat -cat transmission, I think we should keep the big cats in their own group and focus on domestic cats. I don't think they're the same because of their genetic pool. Now, the Chinese work was fantastic, and it was great to see that published uh, recently in Science. And then if you've been following the experimental infections, so this work does confirm if you give a high enough dose to a cat, a dog, a ferret, they can be infected with cats and ferrets being more permissive. So we know that can happen, and we know it can transmit to the next generation of animals passively housed with them. No denying it, this is a reverse zoonosis. This is the most recent uh, paper from two days ago in the New England Journal of Medicine. But I wanted to show you these bars, the blue bars being the primary, the secondaries are then in the tan colored bars. So this does show if you inoculate them, they will shed and they will shed enough to infect the next cat. But this is piece, not PCR. This is virus neutralization, so truly the virus is alive. And so while it happens, it does appear that at least healthy research cats, the shedding is short term. And so that's what's very important for us to factor into our management of our practices, is what should we do with an animal that could have mild respiratory or gastrointestinal tract signs. We now need to factor that in because while there's still no information that suggests that these cats are shedding enough to infect the next person, that is theoretically possible in a small number of cats. So we do need to be careful, especially with pets that are coming from a household that likely has COVID-19, those cats and ferrets and dogs should all be cared for carefully to try to lessen transmission. But I do want to emphasize again at this point, this is a human-to-human -human disease that these guys are probably infected by mistake, living with people, having prolonged direct contact, and then they will be short-lived in their shedding periods based on the current data. So do we believe that it's common or important? The jury's a little bit still out on this, but we do believe at the ISCA, the International Society for Companion Animal uh, Infectious Diseases, we believe that those animals that you're getting ready to see on clinic duty tomorrow if they've had clinical signs longer than 14 days, those cases probably are not related to SARS-CoV-2. Those that have been sick less than 14 days, then we want to have a lot of information from the owner. Does that family likely have COVID-19? Because remember, dogs and cats are probably not shedding it amongst themselves very often. It's probably more important that they acquire the infection from close contact with a person showing clinical signs. The good news on that area, uh, two of the big commercial labs in America started testing animals very early in the United States, the ones that had respiratory signs, a little bit on the gastrointestinal side. And so far, only two positive animals have been found in areas of the United States that have a lot of COVID-19. And those are two of the seven cats that have been reported positive around the world at this time. This is a paper that I use with uh, veterinary students because we're all a little bit afraid right now. We don't want to acquire this infection. But in this closed group of veterinary students, where there were two students that were definitely carrying the virus, 
the nine dogs, uh, excuse me, nine cats and 12 dogs that lived with those students did not become positive. So even though it can happen, and experimentally when we give a large dose, we can certainly infect a cat or a dog or a ferret, it appears that that's a little bit unlikely in a situation in nature. But it definitely could occur. But just to say, state it again, even if a pet was potentially positive, the odds of giving it to the next person is relatively low. But because of the potential risk, we do recommend that people that are being self-quarantined because of having the virus or appropriate signs, they should sequester themselves away from their pets as well because we do want that family's infection to stop as soon as possible. So at this time, we do have the tests available for pets in many countries, but we are being regulated. We can't just send samples, and the building that tests uh, for this virus is right next door. My lab does the PCRs on research samples. But point is, we do limit the number of animals that are tested at this point, and our public health veterinarians in the state of Colorado, here where I live, they have to give us approval to test a pet animal. But that varies by the country, and so those of you with us today will have to struggle with those decisions yourself. Do we believe that it's actually a giant clinical problem in pets, meaning a common cause of upper respiratory infection signs, common cause of gastrointestinal signs? Right now it appears probably not, but we do need additional data. So again, these regulations are going to have to come from each of our individual uh, countries, and it is nice to see those things now uh, being released. Here's the new guidelines uh, from another of our international countries uh, just in the last several days. Now, ISCADE, our group is an infectious disease international consortium. As I mentioned, almost all of us, this group of international experts, which includes Europe, uh, Asia, the United States and the United uh, Kingdom, as well as Canada, have concluded that there's probably not a, a lot of benefit currently of testing individual cats because of the short duration of infection, the fact that most of these pets have not become infected, most have not become clinically ill, and we don't currently have any specific treatments. Remember, this is just a virus that's going to run its course. And so we are uh, making these types of guidelines available internationally. And if you'd like to see the ISCAPE guidelines, they were just updated two days ago. Now, Wasava, which of course most of our members on ISCAPE are also Wasava members like myself, this was a great group of information uh, published with the input from Mary and Michael Day from the Vaccine Guidelines Group. Early in the pandemic, there was a lot of concern about the dogs and the cats. And since there are some coronavirus vaccines in certain countries, then there was a thought, oh, maybe that will lessen the risk of SARS-CoV-2 to people. And, and that is actually untrue. So using the enteric coronavirus dog vaccines that are available in some countries or using the temperature-sensitive mutant FIP vaccines that are available in the United States and a few other countries, there is no indication to do that, trying to lessen this particular virus. They're too distantly related. There will be no benefit for that. But the other nice thing about this particular guideline is that we also talk about what to do during the times that routine care is shut down in clinics. What, what do we do if we miss vaccinations, especially in puppies and kittens? 
this guideline is giving you a lot of information about that topic, and I'll refer you uh, to that publication. Of course, we really want to protect our staff. This is a human disease. Human to human is most important. But since we can have transient shedding, potentially, by dogs, cats, ferrets, we did have to work on guidelines to help veterinary clinicians, and I'm sure in your country as well, we have to decide how to best protect our staff. And so that really starts with asking a group of questions about people. This is a people disease. And so if there's been no evidence of clinical disease, potential exposure in that family, then there's probably very little risk to your staff. And so this is just one example that was published in the Americas, how to use the history from the family to make a decision tree on how to protect your staff. Remember, we're attempting to keep people from becoming ill with this virus. So please check out the published uh, and clinician's brief. But we all have to then tie it into our own countries, our own situations. Sometimes there might even be local laws that apply. apply. I just thought I'd show you uh, our brand new document from Colorado State for how we start our cases. We still are sequestering the owners to the parking lot. They don't come into the building. And so we are then asking the four classic questions, which now also include, is there any pet disease? And if they're within 14 days of having acute respiratory or acute gastrointestinal, we actually factor that in to how we handle them once they're in the building. So I'd be glad to share with our team today our Colorado State guidelines in the future. But we do have to conserve our PPE, our personal protective equipment, so we want to make sure that we appropriately protect ourselves in high-risk cases, but in those that are low-risk to our faculty and staff and students coming back on June 28th, when we're trying to protect those people, we do want to also do it logically, because if we use our heaviest protective devices for low-risk animals, then we don't have enough in the human profession as well as for our higher risk. And so the last couple of things for me, getting ready to set you up, Natasha, uh, for coming to join in. This particular, I think, is really important. We're at risk because we interact with people a little bit smaller risk because we interact with pets. So we're only in the top 20 or so of potential risk. And so if we do the appropriate social distancing, we all wear our masks in the hospital now. When we get closer than three feet, we wear our safety glasses, like when bleeding an animal. Hopefully we can lessen the person-to-person -person part of this particular disease. And then as we go through the summary slide, it's really probably an uncommon for your pet to be infected by you. They do seem to get lower doses from our exposure, but while you're sick, if you have this virus, no cuddling with those pets. Let them social distance away from you in the home, just like your children. And then within that 14 days or so, probably everybody will be fine again. So right now, I hope our bullet three continues. I hope that continues uh, for the next uh, several months, but so far, it's not been documented. So again, the pets will be self-limited, you'll be self-limited, and hopefully everybody will come through this epidemic together. So please check out our websites at Wasava, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing our next speaker and continued discussion about this and animal welfare. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Uh, I hope to see you soon in Egypt. And uh, I will invite you and Dr. Cheney and Dr. Natasha to visit the pyramids together. And uh, we hope to reconnect again and uh, 
Hope to see you in Egypt very soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for your helpful data. Okay, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Good. <laughs> How are you guys? Oh, good Still evening. Awake. Good evening or good morning. What is the time? It is now 9.40 p.m. at night yeah. here in Malaysia. So, good evening, Dr. Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, good day to you guys. Um, <laughs> So my, my part is going to be very short. Uh, I think the very important part has been covered by Mike. Um, so my part is I'm going to talk about animal welfare advice during this pandemic. Okay. Okay. So you can see my slides, right? Yes. Yes, I yep, see. No it. problem, Matt. We can see them clearly. Awesome. Okay, great. So very quickly, uh, the next few slides, I'll talk about different advice for vets, for pet owners, and then I'll go through very quickly advice for NGOs and also the governments or authorities. So we start with why is pets important for people? And it's because the main reason is because of this human-animal bond. And it's mainly because of this bond that creates you know, our career and, and helps us to be better vets with our clients and our patients. And the human-animal bond, if you look at it, what it is actually, it's, it's a mutually beneficial relationship between people and animals. And it helps to benefit both of them, not only just on physical benefits. I think we all know how, how it helps humans to... Uh, have better immunity and better well-being, you know, lower blood pressure and all. But also, very importantly, is that it helps us with our mental well-being as well. So it's not just people, it's also animals' physical and mental well-being as well. So it ties in with animal welfare. So if we can keep our, our pets to have good welfare, then we will have great human-animal bond with them and therefore it affects us positively as well. And welfare, animal welfare in this case is defined as the physical and phys uh, psychological, social and environmental well-being of animals. Now I know this is a little bit difficult to understand, so the next slide I'll explain a little bit more about what uh, animal welfare is. So we need to first understand the difference between welfare and ethics because a lot of people confuse these two together and initially even for me as well, it's a very confusing subject to try to understand. But I'll give you this case study as an example in terms of how we can understand this better. So imagine that you have two cats with similar injuries, which is a broken leg, that's come to you in, the, in your clinic. The only difference is the owners. So in cat A, the owner maybe hit the cat on purpose until the leg is broken. But cat B, you know, the cat ran away from home and got into an accident, accident with a car. And then both of them are, are presented to you in the clinic. If we look at just the welfare of these animals and we look at welfare science to measure this welfare, we can see that actually the welfare for these two cats are the same. So welfare science looks at how the animal is feeling and we're trying to measure you know, what, what the animal's experience is like. And I think from veterinary science, we learn a lot about pain and we understand that a broken, broken, uh, broken bone is very painful. So both cats have similar uh, kind of welfare. The main difference in this uh, example here is the owner and how the owner acts and that is what we call animal ethics and in this case it's it's always good for us to separate it out so that we understand what we are dealing with and in this case we really want to look at the animals and what is the best for the animals rather than uh, you know what telling other people what they should do but by understanding what is good for the animals, it automatically concerns what people should be doing for animals as well. 
Now, animal welfare is not a yes or no type of question. It's not a yes, animal has welfare, no, animal has no welfare at all. But it's a continuum, so it ranges from very poor welfare to very good welfare. An example, I would say, is imagine that sadness in people, if you are not feeling sad, it doesn't automatically mean that you are feeling very happy. So same with an animal as well. If you have, if an animal is suffering and then you, you take away that suffering, it doesn't mean that the animal has good welfare. It might be somewhere in the middle with neutral or adequate welfare or what we call a life worth living. So the whole point of getting animals to, to feel more positive experiences is, is the whole point of animal welfare and trying to bring it into a positive side so that the animal can have a good life. So in short, what are the things that we need to do to ensure that the animal has good welfare or a good life? Five animal welfare needs. This is the most basic of all the animal welfare lesson for us to understand five animal welfare needs. Now, I'm not going to go into detail into all that five because you can download our guidelines that we have written from the website. So we can uh, go to Wasava website and, and find for animal welfare guidelines and it details uh, what you can do in your practice, in your clinic for all these five different animal welfare needs. Now, we are talking here about this pandemic. So what is the difference in your clinic in terms of what you're going to do uh, for the animals? First of all, we need to ensure that one of the things that affects us in the practice is how, how much equipment, uh, personal protective equipment, drugs, availability uh, is, is available for vet practices. So a lot of times the advice comes down to only offer essential veterinary services. And this is very important to, to maintain the animal's health. And of course, you know, a lot of times it's life and death situation that we need to attend to. But we also need to understand that we should, by right, include into it anything that can, anything that is uh, adv really critical for animal welfare that is affecting its, its welfare and is giving it a lot of suffering or poor uh, bad welfare experiences or anything that, that for example, uh, making the animal feel a lot of pain. So those things and, and, and things that also can affect the human animal born as well can be classified, should be classified as urgent cases and should be uh, listed down in essential veterinary services. So throughout the whole lockdown, we still can ensure that animals should have good welfare. The other main thing that's different in a lot of practices uh, during this pandemic is now everybody is practicing social distancing and also hygiene, like washing hands especially. Um, and washing hands really should always be there, whether you are handling other people's pets or touch, you know, uh, having that contact with other humans as well. But it's also one of the advice that you can also give to a lot of pet owners, uh, especially if they themselves are, are, are sick, that they should maintain good hygiene by washing hands before and after touching their pets or before and after feeding their pets as well. Now in the clinic, with all these things being practiced, we need to really focus to try to reduce stress and anxiety in all these animals that are coming to, to us in practice. So we can do things like reducing the amount of time that we need to, to uh, diagnose and treat those animals or even keep them in the wards, in, in the hospitals. Uh, how you handle those animals would be very important, especially that maybe only one person, one owner is, is allowed to go in or maybe even not at all going in so that that animal's familiarity with people is not there. It makes them a bit more anxious. So we need to try to reduce all these things within our practice in terms of what we can do uh, in our practice. And one of the things that is important is handling of animals and how to make a fear-free environment. So we can Google up fear-free uh, practices and there's lots of resources there for us to 
to teach us vets and vet practices how to make it a fear-free environment. But fear-free also have lots of resources for owners at home and also for shelters as well, so people who's dealing with a lot of different animals. So do check it out. Now, the time that an animal visits the clinic is maybe less than 1% of its life. Most of the time, they're going to be staying at home. And home is where it affects the welfare the most. So that's why we have lots more advice and it's more crucial for us as vets to educate pet owners in terms of how they can treat their animals at home. And in times of this pandemic, a lot of times we are all locked down at home with our, with our animals. So we need to make sure that we are first, I mean, when I say we, means pet owners, pet owners need to be prepared to make sure that there's adequate food, uh, adequate pet supplies, that is, for example, cat litter. And if the animal is on medication, to ensure that there's enough medicine supplies uh, and also contact your vets to get enough supplies in the future for, for the entire duration of the lockdown. Now, this is probably more essential at the beginning of the pandemic than in the middle or towards the end of it, but it's still a good reminder for to, to get people to understand how important it is to maintain good welfare for the animals. Also, the other advice for people at home is to have a backup plan in case that the owners fall sick. Is there someone else that can care for the cats or for, for the dogs? Is there somewhere that they can actually put the dogs temporarily or pets temporarily while they recover themselves? So we need to have a backup plan as well. <clears throat> now, the main thing that, that affects welfare of animals at home is a big change in their environment or in their routine. So we need to understand that if while we are all locked down at the same time, we need to try to maintain routine, try to have something that's on schedule. So for example, uh, feeding times, um, time for you know to bring the dog for a walk to go to the toilet or to exercise or play time with the animals should be scheduled and, and should follow roughly around the same time every day. So we create that routine on the animals at home. The other important thing at home is to create a space where the animal is where the animal can feel safe. So to create a space where the animals can go and hide if they don't want to interact with you or, or any other people that's locked down at home, they want to have their own me time. So and it doesn't have to be a whole room for the entire animal. It can just be a quiet little corner and make sure that nobody disturbs that animal while it's resting away from people as well. The, the other thing that we need to consider uh, with people, especially with kids and dogs that's locked down in, at home, is safety. And this, I'm talking uh, specifically about trying to prevent dog bites, especially for children. So we need to educate kids and parents, of course, how to identify body language of dogs, when to touch them and when not to touch them, so that we can avoid uh, dog bites and potential harm at home. And the other main thing about staying home with your pets, especially if they are now not allowed to go out as frequent as, as much, or maybe not allowed to go out at all anymore, so we need to get up, come up with some ideas and things that we can do to entertain pets at home. It doesn't have to be you know, 24 hours a day, but you create that routine and maybe spend a couple of minutes, maybe an hour or, or so, depending on, on you and your pet, really, to get that entertainment at home. So these are some ideas that we can do at home. Like for dogs, we, we rotate different toys every now and then, use a puzzle feeder to give food for the dogs. Training and obedience is actually a good example of how not only you can establish a good human-animal bond with your pets, but also it's a good uh, engagement tool and also a good time to actually enrich them uh, while doing the training. And of course, there's exercise as well. For cats, it's important to make sure that they have enough resources. When I'm talking about resources, 
uh, that means little trays, enough space and hiding spaces especially or uh, places to rest and enough uh, places for them to scratch. Um, so all these resources should be enough for the, for the cats especially if you have more than one cat. So you need to make sure that there's enough for them, for all of them. Um, cats need their own playtime as well and if they are really stressed up, you can consider using a pheromone diffuser. So Fairlyway is a very popular brand of pheromone diffuser that we can use for cats. Now all of these and more ideas is elaborated in the guidelines that I will talk about at the end of this presentation. Just to go through very quickly, uh, for vets especially that's working outside of your vet practices, especially in the shelter, some of the things that you can do for animal welfare. Now in the shelter, maybe you want to try to reduce the amount of animals in the, in the shelter space. So fostering is actually a very popular option and it helps people to you know, get time and get a little bit more attached to the animals as well. So it helps with the adoption process. Uh, some shelters can be still open for adoption if you follow safe safety procedures such as you know uh, following the social distancing uh, try as much as possible to do things over the phone or over maybe an interview through teleconferencing like this so as much as possible uh, avoid contact with humans uh, but it's still possible to have some adoption go programs going out some of the organizations might be doing some outreach work like say for example a vaccination program or a spay and neuter program for, for animals that's roaming around the streets. Well, we need to understand the criteria or, or the situation in your area or in your country and whether there's enough drugs, whether there's enough uh, PPE, whether there's enough, uh, you know, whether there's, there's a high risk of people walking around and you know, looking at what you're doing before you eventually decide to do or not to do. So a lot of times we might need to stop a lot of these activities temporarily and we boil down to only the essential outreach programs that's needed in your area. Now maybe by the end of this lockdown period, there might be also a change in animal welfare priorities. So we need to reconsider again uh, what your organization is doing and whether it's actually addressing the animal welfare issue. So maybe, for example, at the end of the period, maybe a, a rabies outbreak is more of a priority or maybe uh, animals that's facing malnutrition is more of the priority. So we need to really reconsider again while we start back our work. Just very quickly, one of the animal welfare concerns during this pandemic, uh, and it's not just concerning NGOs, this concern vets as well. I'm sure a lot of you already have seen some sort of abandonment that's happening. And uh, this could be because you know people don't understand, people are fearful of the animals, but it also can be because uh, people's reduced ability now to take care of the pets, so whether they're sick or, or doesn't have that financial capability anymore to take care of their pets. The other concerns that we, we need to consider is the risk of mass culling or killing of animals on the streets, especially for the stray or free roaming population, because it might seem that there's more animals roaming around, uh, especially since that now a lot of times their food source, their main food source has been cut off, so they might need to wander around to search for more food. You might also get some euthanasia requests in your practices, uh, especially for people who is a bit scared and a bit afraid of what's happening with their pets. Don't understand. Um, you need to understand. Uh, you need to make sure that they understand that euthanasia is not the only uh, options that they have. Although euthanasia can be used to relieve the welfare of animals, but euthanasia might be just one option. They can look at other options like getting the animals fostered temporarily or finding new owners to adopt the animals from them. So a lot of these welfare concerns stems from a lot of misunderstanding and fear. So the next thing is what vets can do. So we can advocate for animal welfare by firstly 
trying to educate a lot of people about animal welfare, not just our clients, but we can educate other people or give advice to other authorities or the government, for example, on what is welfare and how we can actually maintain good welfare for the animals. We need to make sure that we voice out and make sure that animals uh, are you know, able to get their food pet owners and able to get food supplies, medicine and, and access to vet service uh, when, when it's needed. We need to try to keep pets and owner together as much as possible because that separation would create that anxiety and, and, and uh, we don't get that benefit from that human animal born anymore. So as much as possible, keeping them together will reduce their anxiety and increase their welfare. Dogs would need access to get exercise and maybe opportunities to go for toilet outside. So if you are, um, you know, if you're advising to the government, maybe you should allow uh, pet owners to walk their dogs. Of course, it has to be done in a very safe manner. So keep that distance with other dogs and other humans especially. Um, make sure that they have adequate distance between them. And of course, hygiene is very important. So wash hands before and after uh, touching your animals. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there might be a lot of animals, uh, stray animals or free roaming animals where their normal sources of food has been cut off because uh, maybe the restaurant's not open anymore or you know the, the marketplace has been shut down. So they're all roaming around looking for food now. So the other advice is we don't want them to roam around too much. So we, if people are already, uh, you know, they understand, they know the animals in the area, they recognize those animals and they are concerned for those animals, we should allow them to come out and give food and water for those animals. But of course, again, it shall be done in a safe manner. So as much as possible, um, don't do it you know, in a crowd with a lot of people. Do it in, in one or two uh, persons. Maintain that social distancing and of course maintain good hygiene as much as possible. Now, I know I said a lot, but there's a lot more for you to read. So in terms of animal welfare advice in times of COVID pandemic, uh, you can go to this website, the, the WSAVA um, COVID resource uh, package and you see there's a lot of, of uh, resources on that website so Michael Lapin has just showed you what it looks like at the top if you scroll down to the bottom there's this uh, place for animal welfare advice and we separate it for advice for pet owners organizations or NGOs and then for governments and authorities so do download this and then spread the news as well to uh, relevant people that's it Thanks a lot, Dr. Natasha. Uh, we're happy to listen to you, to your valuable uh, information. Uh, it was very amazing information. Thank you very much. And hope uh, to see you also in Egypt very soon. And uh, going to Pyramid <laughs> and Khan al Khalili. <laughs> I will invite you to visit uh, all Egypt very soon. And we uh, will reconnect very soon after Corona. Dr. Chen. Now we're going to Dr. Chen. Just we're briefly, going. yes, I'll just put my screen up. Yes, of course. Because there's been a couple of questions about membership in the chat room yeah. uh, here. Yeah. Um, on the Wasaba website, and I'll, I'll show you the link to Wasaba in, in, in two slides time, um, there is information on the membership categories and how you can join. So I suggest you go to the Wasaba website. All the information you need to join is there. And as I said, we don't currently have an individual membership. So we need uh, an application from an association or a syndicate or whatever it's called. And it, the inf information is there and you can figure that one out. Another very important thing, we have to thank the people that support Wasaba and um, MSD Animal Health support both Continuing Education and the One Health Committee and we thank them for that and Purina Institute support the One Health Committee 
and also the Animal Welfare and Wellness Committee. So they are two of our very important sponsors. So I'd like to just thank them for their uh, support and continued uh, efforts on behalf of Wasaba. And lastly, that's the Wasaba link, the big one up the top. If you go there, you can find uh, all the other sub, uh, subsidiary links there. And the specific link, which has been up a number of times today, is that one on coronavirus. And you can find that quite easily from the home page. So that's all I needed to share with you. And I thought we can get out of that. So, so anyone, uh, thank you, Dr. Please. Shane. Uh, anyone want to ask questions, send me uh, Send that for me on chat, uh, private, and I will ask it for Dr. Chai. So I will collect this uh, question, and all our speakers are ready to uh, listen to all your questions. Uh, so I am waiting for your questions. Dr. Chen, he asking me the first question that there is any data about case number zero in COVID-19? COVID-19, I wish we, oh, that's a big thing. They don't know yet. There was something reported today and Mike will probably know more than I, but they still don't know exactly the original source of SARS-CoV-2. Uh, they believe it was a bat but they also think there was an intermediate host and they don't currently know what that was. It appears that it wasn't the pangolin as uh, originally thought. So the pangolin is off the hook, shall we say, but they don't yet know uh, how it jumped from one species to another. Mike, do you have any comments? No, no, just that same information, Shane. I don't, I don't think we know yet. But for all evidence that we have, it started probably in a wet market um, where you have a mixture of live animals, uh, both domestic and wildlife, uh, in close proximity together. And I don't know if any of you have seen one in Asia. They can be low on hygiene, shall we say. OK. Uh, there is a question for Dr. Labin. Uh, is there any mutation in isolated viruses in dog and cats or cats? Yes, that's a great question. Um, we don't have enough information from dogs and cats individually to compare them yet. There's a little bit of, say, it's pretty solid, human to human, secondary host, dog, cat, ferret, um, and, and not any new excitement that I've seen that is going to jump hosts or, or become more or less pathogenic in the dog or cat. Okay. Um, asking Dr. Labin, if people shed after recovery and for uh, how long? Yes, yes, that's the really important question is if we're a recovered person, when and if we become susceptible again. And, and honestly, we don't know the answer to that question yet. I can share with you some unpublished data in cats that's coming from Colorado State in about two or three weeks. But if experimental infections are induced, like the one that I showed you uh, earlier today from New England Journal of Medicine and then also our, our friends in China, we have some uh, data coming, not from my lab, but from a colleague that shows good solid immunity on re-challenge at day 28, just from a, a cat that has made it through an experimental infection. You cannot reinfect them on day 28. So hopefully that's evidence that uh, all mammalian species, you know, would have some partial infection. And obviously, there's so many vaccine trials going on right now. I think we'll have exciting new information coming quickly, uh, especially even by the end of, of 2020. OK. What are the side effects of to recover COVID-19? Yeah, that one's to me. For dogs and cats, um, the ones that have become ill have seemingly been self-limited and mainly vomiting, diarrhea, coughing, sneezing, 
perhaps an ocular discharge. We have a study in my laboratory right now as well. So hopefully uh, using cases in the environment, hopefully we'll be able to give more information about the natural course of infection. But if it's an adult cat or an adult dog, when given a large dose of the virus, clinical signs don't occur at all. And so right now, I would say there's no evidence for a long-term clinical illness, which is why ESCADE feels if they've had regular respiratory signs, it's probably a cat with herpes. If it's a dog that's coughing, it's probably Bordetella, not this virus. And if those clinical signs have lasted for 14 days or longer, it's also probably not this virus. So that's one of our decision trees in our hospital is if they've had respiratory or gastrointestinal signs for longer than 14 days, we do not believe that it's this virus. Within 14 days and from a known sick household with sick people, then we do wear our, our um, full PPE because there's short-term shedding potential. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Labin, what do you mean by reverse zoonosis? Ooh, can you restate? Uh, we broke up a little. That's right. I'll, I'll grab that, uh, Mike. A reverse zoonosis is a disease that is passed not from an animal to a human, but from a human to an animal. And it has another name, too, called an anthropenosis, which means that the human is the source of infection to animals. So in this case, the animal gets infected because of a human infection. And as Mike has well described and explained here, that animal appears to be a dead-end host in most cases. It doesn't pass back to humans, but it doesn't even pass to other animals unless in highly experimental circumstances. OK. As there is a question that uh, asking about uh, is uh, inhibitors or ears receptors if it uh, protects the dogs from COVID-19? Yes, that work with the ACE2 receptors do show that ferrets and cats are a little bit more receptive to this virus than dogs. Okay. There's a question for you, Natasha, about how to make an animal comfortable during examination in the clinic. Um, the main thing about an animal, uh, to, to make that animal comfortable in the clinic is how you handle that animal. Um, so you make sure that there is no sudden movement. Uh, if you need to restrain the animal, you know, try to do it as gently as you can. In the, I mean, like you try to do everything as gently as you can before you move on to a more firm type of restraint techniques. Um, so things like small things like um, if you have a big dog, don't lift the dog up to the table. Use bend down to to examine the animal. Uh, if the owner is there. You know, take let the animal take their time to 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 get uh, what do you call that to be comfortable in your examining room while you question the 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 pet owners for this history. So it's small tips like that. If you want to know more details, the animal welfare guidelines is probably the best for you to download and and have a look. Thank you, Dr. Mike, there's another couple of questions about other animals, and maybe you can answer this. One was about wild birds, whether there's any spread, if they are involved in any spread of COVID, novel SARS-CoV-2, and also another question relating to uh, horses and other ruminant animals. Have they been uh, checked to see if they can spread the disease amongst themselves or to humans? There, there is a question, Dr. Chen. As there is a study in China confirmed that cats are infected by always in COVID-19 and it also confirmed transmission of infection between cats. So airborne. True. True. The question so, is, so Mike, the, 
the question was about um, horses and other animals other than cats and dogs, in effect. Yes. Just yes, like. that's a really great group of questions. I was just following the chat there. Um, again, birds seem to be quite resistant. The farm animals studied so far, especially the pig, has been uh, quite resistant. I'm, I'm not familiar with horse data yet, but we've had no buzz uh, on the internet of, of horses becoming infected. But farm animals and birds right now, we at CSU, we focus on the, has the owner been sick type questions because we do want to lessen human to human transmission. Um, and most uh, of our trying to avoid the animal transmission has been focused on the cats and the ferret just because of a little bit higher susceptibility. But we do remind people that dogs, cats, ferrets don't become infected spontaneously. And so those that are owned by known individuals, it's really important to have that history from the family because that's most likely how an animal would become a transient carrier. And then I did notice a little bit about the clinical signs uh, came up on a couple of the chats. Again, in the experimentally infected animals, they have been quite mild and self-limited, and that's even with high dose. And that's what we've seen uh, with that handful of cats from, from nature uh, and the handful of dogs that have been confirmed to be positive is that just a mild self-limited disease. And so if there is an illness associated with this virus in our companion animals, it will probably be short-lived. And so I notice a euthanasia question. As long as they can be safely sequestered within the hospital or preferably at the home where they became infected, that should be, um, it should be over in the very short term. No evidence for long-term shedding. Uh, so far in companion animals. Um, there is a question for Dr. Natasha. What other ways for treating ill animals other than euthanasia? Uh, right, that's a very good question. And I think I have one more privately asked question about what is euthanasia. So I want to, I want to explain that euthanasia is defined as a good death. So what you're doing is you're assisting the animal to die uh, by in giving an injection usually of an overdose of a type of anesthetic. So what you're doing is you are killing the animal in a very humane manner and as least painful manner as possible. So what, what do we do uh, with with animals that needs euthanasia, but but is you know what other options do we have for for animals that needs euthanasia? We need to understand whether there's chance to recover or not recover, or whether it will go down badly. So, for example, uh, in case of rabies cases, we know that one stage within the next 10 days and they will suffer immensely the next few days and still eventually they will usually die. So in, in those cases, euthanasia is normally the best option uh, to relieve that animal's suffering. And then the other options that you can do for other animals that are in pain but you don't want to euthanize or the owner refuses to euthanize is to find other ways to relieve the animal from suffering. So giving a lot of pain medication is the next best thing that you can do. Okay, there is another question for you, Dr. Natasha. Um, do you think uh, it is important to have the owners in the examination room to reduce pet anxiety? As with the current circumstances, vet clinics are shifting to taking e-consults. Usually, pets respond much better with owners in the room. Uh, it, it helps that they, there's somebody familiar in the room that they can you know, help to uh, calm themselves while you're trying to do the examination. But there are some animals that 
especially for, for dogs that become a bit more aggressive when the owner is in the room. So you really have to understand how to read animal behavior uh, and think about whether you need or not need to have the owners in the room. But most of the time, having them in the room uh, is, is a much better option for the animals. Okay, uh, and uh, there's a question for uh, Doctor. Uh, IB, what about IP vaccine in poultry? Can be used for in COVID-19? Uh, depends about the use of either the dog enteric coronavirus vaccine or the the FIP vaccine that's available in some country. There would be no uh, benefit to trying to lessen SARS-CoV-2, and so the vaccine guidelines committee does not recommend vaccinating dogs or cats with those vaccines to try to lessen this virus. It would uh, be ineffective. And I did see a couple of the other questions about clinical illness. There is no known specific therapy for this coronavirus, just like uh, the other coronaviruses right now for pets. Uh, but it does look, even in the high-dose experimental animals, illness is minimal and self-limited. And so sequestering or, or safety at home with the owner, just like you would, stay away from the other family members. Hopefully, if there is any mild respiratory or GI, gastrointestinal disease in those pets due to this virus, they apparently should be self-limited with the data that we have so far. So really no evidence uh, that I know of, Shane, that there's any chronic shedding or disease syndrome. Ferrets might shed a little bit longer than cats, who shed a little bit longer than dogs, but no evidence of chronic disease. And so if you're seeing those animals with vomiting, diarrhea, coughing or sneezing, that have been that way for longer than two weeks, it's probably not this virus. It's probably their regular viruses. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Dr. Natasha, there is a question about what is the hardest experience you had ever? Hardest experience? With an animal. I think uh, euthanasia issue is always the hardest experience for, for not just for me but for any vets to make that decision or to talk to the owners and to tell them the bad news. Uh, that's, that's probably the hardest experience in dealing with animals. Okay. And what okay. do you look at reading? on vet's behavior? In animal behavior is a big course. It's not, it's not so easy to, to just ask you to read one or two documents. Uh, there, but there are lots of courses on, on animal behavior out there. So uh, maybe I can compile a few that, and then pass it to the host and, and he can uh, share it with everybody here. Okay. I just think maybe, Dr. Muhammad, that uh, maybe you can collate the rest of the questions and perhaps send them to myself and uh, I can pass them to uh, Dr. Lappin and Dr. Lee and they can perhaps respond to them uh, as we go on. There's probably one or two more that we can do before we run out of time. We only have a couple of minutes left. And if there are okay. any extra ones, maybe if you can send those to me and I can pass them on to... to um, uh, the speakers and they can respond when they can and I will send them back to you, okay? Okay. Maybe another couple of questions and we can finish up. Yes, the last question for you, Dr. Shane. Can any vet join Noasaba or just organizations? Only organizations at the moment. We, are, we have been looking at the possibility of having individual membership. Uh, that hasn't been decided yet, but even if it was an individual membership, we would be looking at you joining an international association of people who weren't affiliated, but that has not been um, uh, worked out how that would work. We might vote on that this September, but we don't know yet. So currently what we would ask you to do in Egypt is work with a veterinary association, or if you do not have one, 
a companion animal one, establish one. And we could even help you do that. And then you can join with Sama. We can do the, uh, from the, the syndicate, the, the, the veterinary syndicate. There, there, you can, and uh, there is a, a link on the Wasaba webpage where you can find out all the documents that you need. There are requirements for that association, um, so you need to read through all of those to make sure you meet those requirements. Dr. Singh, you mean that session is for vet animals only or for veterinarians? For example, in Singapore, our association is for all veterinarians. It doesn't matter whether they are uh, large animal veterinarians or small animal veterinarians or research veterinarians because we only have a small number. But usually, if there is a companion animal association, we prefer them to join. Okay. Thank you a lot, Dr. Shani. Dr. Shani and uh, we are uh, most welcome to listen to you. Thank you, Dr. Michael Laban. Thank you, Dr. Natasha. Uh, we were very happy with you. Uh, see you soon in Egypt. Uh, Thank you very much for inviting us. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we are very you, happy. Uh, please keep in contact. And Mike and Natasha, good job, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. We are complete with you. Leave you with us. We are Dr. Michael Laban. ودكتور ناتاشا ودكتور تشان خلصوا احنا عايزين نسمع تعليق دكتور هيثم فرغالي معانا دكتور هيثم على ال دكتور هيثم ازي حضرتك؟ ازيك يا دكتور محمد ايه رأي حضرتك؟ عايزين نسمع رأي حضرتك في ال في الويبينار طبعا كلام كتير جدا طبعا الناس محترمه جدا طبعا آه الكلام طبعا برضو زي ما كلام العالم كله بيقول ان القصه لسه ماسكت شويه برضو عشان ما ناخدش قرارات حاسمه على الموضوع دلوقتي ونتعامل مع الاخت والكلاب ان هم سورس اوف انفكشن لان الخطوه دي خطوه مهمه قوي في الحسابات تمام لان المستقبل المهنه بيقف على كلام يعني مسؤول المفروض ان احنا لسه ان احنا نعتبر القطط والكلاب مصدر للعدوى دي قصه كبيره جدا حتى الابحاث اللي معموله ابحاث تعتبر نسبه قليله جدا بالمقارنه بالابحاث اللي بتتعمل على المستوى العالي. تمام. مش الحاجه اللي تخلينا ناخد الريسك بتاع لان اول ما ظهر القصه دي ابتدت الناس ترمي الكلاب والقطط في الشارع وده كان حاجه مش مظبوطه يعني قرار بدري قوي. هو احنا نقدر بكونكلوجن بس من القصه دي ان احنا نبدا ناخد خطوات الاحترازيه في التعامل مع القطط والكلاب زي ما بنعمل خطوات احترازيه مع البني ادمين. تمام. يعني هي دي النقطه الاساسيه في الكلام يعني. تمام تمام انما انما طبعا يعني بصراحه حدث محترم والناس محترمه جدا ان احنا الوسيبة بيتعاملوا معانا هنا يعني حاجه ضروري كنا نبدا نعمل ايفنت زي كده كذا مره ان شاء الله وفي مواضيع كثيره يعني مش بيتس لان هم مرجعيه في قصه البيتس في العالم كله طبعا 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 ربنا يكرم ان شاء الله ونكرر كذا مره ان شاء الله الحدث إن احنا ان شاء الله يعني في بروميس من الزمن ان شاء الله هنقرر الحدث مع الوسافة وهنحاول ان احنا دايما نخرج بره الصندوق نقدر نوصل المعلومه بشكل مختلف لزي ما انا الاطفال بيطريين ودكتور هيثم برضو ان شاء الله عايزين نرتب مع حضرتك مواعيد محاضراتنا مع حضرتك الجايه ان شاء الله برضو ممكن تبقى يعني جزء منها ريليتد للايفنت بتاع النهارده وان شاء الله يبقى في سلسله من توبكس مفيده لزمايلنا اطباء بيطريين. ان شاء الله طبعا طبعا ده شرف ليا ان انا اشارك مع النقابه ده بيتنا كلنا يعني ده احنا نتمنى نساعد في اي حاجه وطبعا زملائنا دول حبايبنا يعني الواحد يتمنى ان هو يقدر يبقى معاهم في اي حاجه ان شاء الله. شكرا دكتور هيثم جدا والله نشكر حضرتك معانا دكتور محمد نبيل برضو زميلنا أنا حابب بس أشكر باسم فيت سومان أكاديمي تسمعني يا محمد صوتك بيقطع بس معلش عايزين نسمع دكتورة رولا تماني أه اتفضلي يا دكتورة رولا دكتورة رولا اتفضلي أولا مساء الخير على الجميع أنتوا سامعيني أوكي؟ أه سامعيني مساء الخير طبعا أنا بشكر زملاء الدكتور محمد أشرف والدكتور محمد نبيل على التنظيم الرائع وهذا طبعا مو بغريب على مصر وعلى نقابة الأطباء في مصر والزملاء الأفاضل أه وبشكر حتى الدكتور هيثم على المحاضرة الحلوة وعلى الجروب طبعا وسابق وأتمنى فعلا أن مصر تكون عضو في وسابق 
احنا دولة الامارات اصبحنا اعضاء معاهم من 2017 وبالعكس في استفادة كبيرة لوجودكم معاهم لان من ناحية طبعا حضور المؤتمرات الكونتينوس ادوكيشن اللي هم بيقدموه الكوميتي اللي ممكن تدخلون فيها وخاصة بخبراتكم يعني ما شاء الله تقدروا ان انتم تفسوا وجودكم في هاي الجمعية ثاني شيء بخصوص موضوع الكوفيد 19 والبيت انيمال حابه بس انقول لكم احنا يمكن تجربتنا في الامارات مع البيت كلينك كجهات رقابيه فطبعا في بعض الاجراءات الاحترازيه اللي احنا طلبناها واللي بعض حتى العيادات اصبحت ان هي تسويها بصوره اكبر يعني مثلا في العيادات اللي هي اصبحت ما تستقبل الكلاينت كاشخاص انما هم ياخذون من الحيوان من خارج العياده ويعالجونه وبعدين يسلمونه لصاحب الحيوان، اذا اضطر ان صاحب البيت نفسه يدخل موضوع التباعد طبعا الجسدي موجود حاطين علامات على الارض حاطين تعليمات خارجيه حتى خارج الكلينك انها توضح للناس الاشتراطات والاجراءات اللي لازم ياخذونها بيمنعوا دخول الكلاينت اذا مش حاطين ماسك ولابسين جلوفز طبعا هاي بيمنعوها منعا باتا يعني فالاجراءات موجوده حتى احيانا في سيرفي من خارج البوابه للاشخاص اذا كانوا مثلا كانوا كونتاكت مع مصابين عندهم اي اعراض مرضيه على اساس حتى ان ما يتم نقل المرض ممكن لا قدر الله اذا موجود لان في ناس ممكن ما تظهر عليهم الاعراض ممكن يكونوا نقلوها للبت وفي نفس الوقت هذا البت بيروح عياده العياده هاي فيها انواع اخرى وحيوانات ثانيه فاحنا بنراعي هاي الاجراءات وفي حتى ال الجهات اللي ممكن تخالف الاجراءات الاحترازيه احيانا يتم اغلاق المنشات فالحمد لله يعني وصلنا ل يعني ما في اي حالات بالنسبه طبعا للبيت انيمال عندنا موجوده الاجراءات موجوده حتى الدوام اصبحوا يخلوه شفتات يعني حتى شفت الصبح ممكن ما يشوف شفت اللي بعد الظهر بحيث انهم برضه يقللوا عدد ال فبس حبيت انقول لكم يعني هاي التجربه عندنا وشكرا جزيلا وان شاء الله يكون طبعا في تعاون اكثر في مثل هاي المحاضرات وهي الاستفاده. شكرا. ميرسي جدا دكتور رولا وسعدين بيكي وبالتعاون معاكي ومع دوله الامارات العربيه الشقيقه ودايما بنقول دكتور رولا نص مصري ونص اماراتي. يعني الميكس الجميل اللي بنحبه دايما. ميرسي لحضرتك جدا ولتعاونك معانا. هنسمع دلوقتي دكتوره دينا ودكتور احمد سمير. ودكتور محمد تاني يحب يختموا معانا مين حابب يبدا فيهم يتفضل دكتوره دينا ازيك دكتوره دينا ايوه دكتور محمد دكتوره دينا سوشيال برودكت مانجر بتال فارم مصر الدايموند سبونسر فور اور ايفنت حب نسمع رايك عن الايفنت و اختمي معانا برضو في الايفنت احنا بنحب نشكركم جدا على الايفنت طبعا حاجه كويسه جدا ان احنا يبقى في بنوصل اوريدي للعالم ونشوف الاسوشيشن زي الواتساب بتتكلم بتقول ايه على الكوفيد وعلاقتها بالبات دي خطوه كويسه جدا نتمنى ان احنا اوريدي تتكرر بعد كده ونحب نشكر الحضور كلهم ودكتور هيثم ودكتور احمد وطبعا فاكس اونلاين على ان هم غادي المحاضره دي وان هم ادونا الفرصه ان احنا نقابل زمايلنا وان شاء الله يبقى في تعامل مستمر. ميرسي دكتور دينا ونشكركم على الدور المجتمع اللي بتقوموا بيه وان شاء الله نتعاون دايما في خدمه الزملاء الاطباء الباترين ان هم يقدروا يوصلوا للمعلومات من المصادر الموثوق منها من الجهات المعتمده دوليا. عشان يفيدوا نفسهم ويفيدوا البيت اونرز ويطوروا من نفسهم دايما. دكتوره دينا بتال فرد معانا دكتور احمد سمير شكرا دكتوره دينا. دكتور محمد. اتفضل يا فندم. شكرا جزيلا ليكم بصراحه حاجه ممتعه جدا. الاكسبوجر على الاكسترنال انفايرمنت ده ده رائع جدا حتى وان كان احنا سمعنا الناس ديت وسمعنا هم بيقولوا ايه حتى هنختلف معاهم في راي لينا اراء معينه ادي الاكسبوجر نفسه ده شيء رائع جدا فكره جميله انتوا عملتوها وتم بشكل كبير بس حابب اتكلم في حته طبعا انا بتاع مايكروبيولوجي فموضوع الانفكشنز والكوفيد 
الفيد والبيتس بيتس او بيتعامل مع حيوان اليف يفضل يفضل انت بتتعامل مع الحيوان ده زي بتتعامل مع فرد من افراد الاسره يعني الاهتمام بالنظافه الاهتمام بالتعقيم ده مهم جدا لان الحيوان لو حتى جاله الانفكشن واصبح كارير وما ظهرش عليه اعراض انت بتلمسه فبالتالي زيه زي الانسان اللي عايش معاك في البيت لازم يبقى فيه تطهير لازم يبقى فيه نظافه لازم يبقى فيه تباعد لان احنا دلوقتي في مرحله احنا مش عارفين بالظبط مفيش اكزاكت انفورميشن عن الموضوع كل شويه تلاقي حاجه بتطلع حاجه بتتقال بحث بيتعمل السرعه في الابحاث عشان نطلع معلومات كثيره ممكن يحصل فيها بعض الاخطاء وبعض المستيكس فبالتالي انا في المرحله اللي زي دي لازم اتعامل بقدر كبير جدا من الاحتياط والحاجات الاحترازيه حتى وان كان ما بينقلش انا برضو لازم اتعامل معاه بمنتهى الاحتياط لان في الاخر سلامه الشخص وسلامه الـ 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 الحيوان اللي معايا ده اللي يهمني واشكركم شكرا جزيلا وانا كنت سعيد جدا ان انا موجود وحضرت معاكم النهارده يعني شكرا جدا شكرا لحضرتك دكتور احمد وشرف لينا جدا وجود حضرتك معانا في الايفنت الكبير ده برجع تاني اعيد لحضراتكم الشكر لكل السبونسرز بتوعنا واستاذنا الدكتور هيثم على المحاضره الرائعه اللي بدانا بيها بشكر بتال دايموند سبونسر بشكر شركه فارموفيت بشكر شركه شامب او اريون اللي هي ايجيبشن هولاند كامباني بشكر ليبتو فيت لاب دول البريتانيوم سبونسرز بتوعنا وبشكر جولدن سبونسرز بتوعنا فوينكس كامبانيز كان فيت لاب وبشكر فيت وورك ابلكيشن او فيت وورك كامباني هنشير معاكم كل الداتا بتاعت السبونسرز بتوعنا احنا دايما معاكم مستمرين هدفنا ان احنا نفعل دورنا المجتمعي بتاع فيت ومان اكاديمي بحيث ان احنا نقدر نطور الاطباء البيطريين في مصر في العالم العربي مستمرين معاكم وان شاء الله دايما في جديد وفي حاجات مختلفه وهنوصل لجهات عالميه كتير جدا ونقدم لكم حاجات بره الصندوق وان شاء الله نقدر نطور اكتر واكتر بحيث ان كل دكتور بيطري يبقى في اعلى مستوى يقدر يخدم مهنته ويخدم وطنه كل سنه وانتم طيبين ورمضان كريم عليكم. حضرتك يا محمد قبل ما تختم حابب اسمع دكتور طارق. اه دكتور طارق معانا؟ اه دكتور طارق صبحي اتفضل دكتور طارق. السلام عليكم. اهلا وسهلا يا فندم. اتفضل دكتور طارق. مجهود مشكور جدا جدا وحاجه موفقه ان شاء الله ومزيد من الاحداث بامر الله يا دكتور محمد. سامعين شكرا انا بس حابب اوجه يعني شكري خاص للدكتور هيثم وطبعا برغم ان الصوت ما كانش واضح قوي في احيان كثيره لكن الحقيقه المخزن المحاضره وصل وبشكره جدا على مجهوده ولكن ليا تعقيب صغير كده الفيديو اللي تفضل هو بعرضه على طريقه الفحص بتاعت الحيوان أنا مش شايف فيها إبداع، واي نوت إنها كانت اتعملت عندنا في الكلية وصورناها إحنا وعملناها بإسمنا. يعني أي ثينك دي هتبقى أفضل كتير خصوصًا إن أنا بشعر بقيمة الحاجة لما أكون الطبيب بتاعنا وأساتذتنا هم اللي بيعملوها. فممكن حضرتك تعمل لنا الديمونستريشن ده في الكلية أو في القسم بحيث إن إحنا نبقى فاميليار أكتر ويكون الشرح فيه برضه اكثر وضوحا لاستفادة الزملاء كلهم ومرة ثانية بشكركم جميعا كل سنة وانتم طيبين وان شاء الله نتقابل يوم الاحد في المحاضرة بتاعت يا عم محمد. انت نورنا يا فندم وهنبقى مبسوطين معاك ان شاء الله طبعا. حابين نؤكد على شكرنا للدكتور هيثم على المحاضرة القيمة وان شاء الله يبقى في مزيد من المحاضرات التوضيحية الفترة اللي جاية مع الدكتور هيثم فرغالي الراجل ما الدكتور ما بيتأخرش يعني هو بصراحة يعني شرف لينا وجوده معانا يعني احنا بنفتخر باساتذتنا الكبار الدكتور احمد سمير والدكتور هيثم والدكاتره المحترمين والدكتور طارق مسك طبعا شايف الدكتور طارق مسك بنرحب بيه وبحييه لان طبعا الدكتور طارق مسك عزيز علينا كلنا يعني. طيب احنا بشكر كل الحضور يعني بجد ان شاء الله نقدر نمتلكه دايما الريكورد يا جماعه موجود ان شاء الله الريكورد هيتحط على كل الجروبات بتاعتنا على الواتساب وجروب التليجرام وعلى الفيسبوك بتاعت ش... بتاعتنا فيت اونلاين اكاديمي او في او اي دي اور فيسبوك بيج تابعوا عليها كل جديد وجدول كل المحاضرات 
بنشكركم جدا دكتور محمد اشرف وزميلي دكتور محمد نبيل دكتور رنا اكاديمي دايما معاكم وبنكمل بعض يلا يعني حابب اقول ربنا يحفظكم جميعا من كورونا وان شاء الله تعدي العزم على خير ونلتقي جميعا ويحصل لي كونكشن بيننا تاني على ارض قريب جدا ان شاء الله. سنة طيبين وايفنت جديد وويبنار جديد تنسوش تبصوا على المصادر وتقولوا لنا الريفيوز بتاعتكم لما احط لكم لينك على الجروبات بتاعتكم. سنة طيبين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته.